What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Long Days. I am Yanni, and over here, sitting to my left, your right, is Thunder Dan Soar. It'd be, it'd be cooler if Dan Marley was here. Yeah, we put, yeah. If it was a pan over and it was Dan Marley, yeah. and you, you put your leg over so I felt like I had to match it. <laughs> I was like, you can't just look like the schmucks sitting there. We look like a guy and a girl sitting, having a date. Yeah. yeah I sit like a girl, you're sitting like a guy. This just like, gives away that my dick is malleable enough that I can squash it. You got Play-Doh dick. You yeah. can move it around. Yeah. It's a, that's a, it's a small, it's this small. Is a, this is a dad triangle. Yeah, that just means you got junk in the trunk. When you can <laughs> yeah, do that. I, can't, <laughs> I can't smush my boys. Yeah, yeah. But I do sometimes, oh yeah. When can I'm, you get there? When I'm, yeah, when I'm feeling like, this feels like I'm talking about the art, the craft of comedy. Yeah. Well, this feels like I'm telling you about my, my kid that might not uh, make it into high school <laughs> without repeating eighth grade. Yeah. I go, well, his mother's dumb, so we figured uh, this was going to happen eventually in grades <laughs> six through eight. And there's always a couple of things you can tell about people sitting like that. The person who sits like this often will shake their foot. I feel like they're lying when they shake their foot. Yeah, my... Um, and I think, like you said, if somebody does this... Pretentious. Pretentious. Yeah, that activates the pretentious part of your brain. My mom's boyfriend that I hated would sit like this, and he'd flip his flip-flop, slap it against his foot. So to me, that's the sign of a real piece of shit. <laughs> When you said that, I could almost hear the flop hitting his foot. Yeah. And what's cool is I knew my mom and him were starting to break up when she would snap on that. I'd be like, yes. So would that start to annoy her? Yeah, she'd be like, Joe, could you not? Yeah. And he'd be like, what? And then I'd be like, yes. <laughs> I'd be sitting there, I'd be like, we're headed there. We're headed there. Get him out. Get him. Lock him up. Lock him up. And then when he left, he, did he leave in flip-flops? And then those, those are the last noises. You, like that noise Dude, I, just followed you. When honestly, you hear that noise, do you just go, do you have like a Vietnam flashback? Yeah. Fop, I don't want to watch UConn's women's basketball. I'm not an R word. I'm not I'm an not, R word. I'm not. I'm smart. I'm a sm I might not be a smart man, <laughs> but I know what love is. <laughs> yeah. So he used to, he gave you a lot of confidence because he used to build you up and call you smart. He used to call you a genius and things like that. Yeah. So what would happen was I'd be at dinner and I would, uh, which I still do now. At 30. Did he have like a stepdad name? Like Joe. Joe. Yeah. And Joe's a good one. I, I mean, I talk about it on stage, but he was my dad's ex best friend, and he was like, they'd come in. Wait and, a second, hold yeah. up! Don't you can't. He's my godfather. He was your godfather. <laughs> he was my godfather. So he was your godfather. He was yeah. your dad's ex best friend. Yeah, yeah. And and just he slid in there. Yeah. So they. We, How long after? Oh, like eight years. I mean, not not. Listen, it's never cool. It's never cool. It's never cool. Was he just like? At first, no, did you my just mom, think he was over talking with your mom about your dad, and then you... Yo, we moved him from <laughs> Connecticut to Colorado uh -huh. because for some reason, my mom and I were like sitting around. It was the summer of the 96 Olympic Games, uh -huh. and I was like, oh, you should... Joe and his wife were my parents' friends, obviously, right. my godfather. Right. I was like, when was the last time we talked to Joe and Lynn? And my mom was like, oh, shit, since like 89. And I was like, call him up. And I did it to myself. I was like, you should see how Joe's doing. So my mom called Joe. He was divorced. My mom was single. They were talking. And then my mom, we were looking for a roommate. So my mom's like, how would you feel about Joe moving? Wait, you guys were looking for a roommate? Yeah. Yeah. There was like this one time in my mom's, uh, you know, where she, we were like, we need the help. Right. We're, it'll help out. We'll have a roommate. I love the fact that you were just like an eight-year-old kid. I was, uh, I was like 12. Brainstorming revenue options. <laughs> yeah, <mom. laughs> streaming revenue. <laughs> I want to put her on an OnlyFans now. You're like, wait, Mom, have you thought about this? Mom, I'm going to toss this out there. What if I get some Spyderco knives? <laughs> we go door to door. I sell it. If you get three people, me and my mom just pushing magazine subscriptions. Marie Claire has got a brand new deal for you. It's 14 issues. Um, yeah, so, so you ended up, you were trying to figure out how to rent one of the rooms out. I liked Joe. Because yeah. I only knew him as, like, my dad's friend. No eight-year-old should have to think this stuff through. Again, I was 12. You so were 12. Was, Sorry was, about that. Uh, yeah. You were an adult. I apologize. Eight, eight, honestly, with eight, it would be more acceptable because it's pie-eyed, and it's like, dad's friend, 12. You're like, all right, kid, fuck, what are you doing? You put yourself in harm's way. Yeah, I don't know how they, I don't know how they consider, uh, when they consider adulthood in the Midwest, but 12, I think, is pretty young. Colorado laws, 100 years ago, I would have had to have had my own farm by then. Yeah, you probably would have. Yeah, you would have had to lead a had storm to, on an yeah. Indian tribe. They go, if you can't drive cattle, why are you here? <laughs> yeah. Damn it, Dan. 
So Joe, you meet. So you you hook your mom and Joe up unintentionally. Completely unintentionally. Yeah. And it ends up being the Did worst. Did he at least pay a little rent for a little bit in that room? Yeah, they faked it. Yeah. And then there became a time where it was like a rainstorm, and I went to piss, mm. and I remember it was like really storming outside, and the lightning struck, and I saw that his door was open, like a haunted, like a scary movie. <laughs> And I noticed his door was open and I was like, I'll shut Joe's door. And I like looked in and his, he wasn't in his bed. And I was like, damn. I immediately knew. I was like, damn. <laughs> Did he play it off for a while? Like you, you, I gave it a couple of days. And then finally with my mom, I was like, so Joe's sleeping in your room? And she was like, oh, we were going to tell you. <laughs> and you're like, all right, all right. And it was just like, you know, he had never had kids. He didn't Did he know. he play it off for a while? Like he came out of a room naked and you were like, he was like, oh, sorry. I was I was fixing oh, I was, the uh, air conditioner. It was crazy. Your mother was trapped under a boulder, and I had to get her out. And you're like, okay, cool, oh, yeah. Cool. No, no, no. Once that. I knew, I was like, all right. And then everything was starting. I again was still so stupid. I didn't put it together that it was going to turn terrible. Right. But yeah, then it's like you have no control of the situation. Then all of a sudden, my ranking got dropped. When he was a roommate, we were evil. We were. Even ranking. You could go to his room and be like, hey, hey rent's Joe. due. Yeah. Hey, Joe. <laughs> you using a little too much hot water, buddy. <laughs> I come in with a tool belt. Right. I'm in here to fix that thing that you said downstairs. Right. It's like, oh, it's a little bit of some of the ceilings falling off. <laughs> <laughs> just having, I'm having super conversations. Yeah. I, go, I go, yeah, lady owns this building's a real bitch. <laughs> Busting my ass about my grades, <laughs> and then it turned into. Uh, and then it turned into time for you to go to your room, Dan. Yeah. Then and it became. Like, then it became them getting hammered, and then at dinner, them letting some yeah. real <laughs> loose opinions of me. Go to your room, Dan. Wait a second. Dude, I'm your boss, and he goes, what? "I'm fucking your mom." I know. Well, I'm fucking your mom. <laughs> I'm kind of like, your dad now. Ah. <laughs> and once that happened, he just started like my mom hated my dad. Right. So once they started dating, it became like a constant roast of my dad that wasn't around. Oh. So just all the time, they're like, "What a loser!" <laughs> and I'm sitting there, I'm like, "Yeah, he's kind of cool." I'm like in the other room, I'm like, he's, he's funny. Yeah. So not only did this guy go from a roommate. To your kind of stepdad. I mean, full on. They didn't get married, but straight up acted like a stepdad. You had to think about them in that room talking about your dad. Oh, I didn't hear it. Yeah. You would no, hear they do it in front of you. They do it in front of me. They didn't give yeah. a fuck. Put a couple pint glasses of screwdrivers back. <laughs> you start letting it be known what you think of your ex-husband. Yeah. Screwdrivers is a real drinker's drink. <laughs> it's fucking alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> Vodka and orange juice. Yeah. It's, the, it's the quick fix. Yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to have a mass supply of a quick fix. Right, right, right. Yeah. If it, you, vodka and orange juice is the least creative drink. Yes. Nobody goes to a bar and orders a screwdriver. Both my parents, my mom didn't drink screwdrivers. Joe's drank. My mom drank a Southern Comfort, Southern Comfort Manhattan on the rocks. That was her drink. She made herself a cocktail. I learned how to Joel make it. Joel just went like I this. learned how to Joel make it. Joel just dumped vodka in <laughs> Joel just did this. And then he went and got the Minute Maid. Yeah. You're like, hey, that's me in the morning. He's like, no, yeah. it's not. Yeah, this Tropicana. Yeah, no. Yeah, we'll get some with some pulp. Make you a real man. We got some powdered tang for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get some crystal light, you <laughs> pussy. <laughs> but he, my dad would drink rum and Cokes, which is another super alcoholic drink. Yeah. And mostly rum. Yeah, yeah. It was opaque. Yeah. It's um, it's a working class alcoholic drink. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I can I can get this consistently with not a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a I think like the high class alcoholics or the Yo, rich alcoholics. Joe used to drink Barton's vodka. That's like fucking what nice restaurants use to detail silverware. <laughs> yeah. I always yeah. I would figure the working class alcoholic you can have a lot of vodka in plastic bottles. Yes, yes. Barton's. Look up Barton's. I yeah. still know that fucking dumb black and red with the. I think it's like an eagle on it. Uh, Barton's vodka. Yeah. Barton's whiskey looks too nice. It's what the... Uh, there it is. Yeah, that's a lower, inco a lower income alcohol. You, you, you can get a 175 for twenty two ninety nine. Oh, she can oh, get yeah, one for twelve ninety nine. That. Yeah. That's plastic, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, that fucking bottle's <laughs> plastic. Dude, I didn't know my parent. I didn't know my mom, and like I didn't know I was around alcoholics until high school when... Uh, when your friends, dad died, that was a well, you know, yeah, yeah, your dad dies of cirrhosis. <laughs> you kind of get a clue. I want to say middle school uh -huh. and like freshman year, we had a recycling bin right out the door of my garage, which in you know in the suburbs you you come and go through the garage. 
I'm aware of that now because I'm a country boy. You're a country boy. I'm a country boy. When yeah. you grow up in the suburbs, you, you come in through the garage right. door and you leave through the garage door. So our recycling bin was right outside the garage door. I remember, I think it was my friend Garipe was like, damn, dude, how many 175s you got in the recycling <laughs> bin? And I went and looked and I was like, a lot. And it was like three SoCo 175s and like four Bartons. Right. That was before recycling though. So you could just throw that in with the regular trash. That was when recycling started. Oh. So that's when you started seeing So you just walked over like a Chinese woman just <laughs> dude, if those, with a dumbbell full of fucking bottles. I, I swear to God, if we lived in New York, we would have had an infestation of people digging through our fucking <laughs> bottle. It was that much money. It was like... It was that much plastic <laughs> bottles. It was crazy. There would just be a line of old Chinese people it was waiting. Al- it was alarming. And then Pepsi cans sprinkled from me. Yeah. A uh, lot of people are wondering why I'm saying Chinese people. Um, in New York, they have cornered that market. It's unbelievable. They're incredible at it. It's unbelievable. Go to any key food or sea market and just go to where they turn in for the money. You'll just see mountains of bags. They really do it. And sometimes they're very creative with how they carry it. Yeah. Like they will, I've seen women with like a wood stick with like three or four attached on each side and she'll just be walking with it, pushing a cart full of bottles. That's New York CrossFit. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Get a fucking enough to feed your family and plastic on your back. That's your wad. (laughs) It's your workout of the day. Yeah. I mean, they do it. They're Asians. Uh, they gravitate towards that, and they gravitate towards casinos. They yeah. love gambling. Man, they also, though, are the greatest. If you get an Asian dealer, they're going to fuck your shit up. Now, you they know a lot that. about that because you you got you dealt drugs, you did drugs, and you got robbed by a drug dealer. Yeah, I didn't. There, you played a, all the parts in that movie. I, I didn't really ever deal drugs. Right. I lived with a drug dealer. I lived right. with a guy that sold weed. Right. It's like weird to call him a drug dealer. Right. Drug you watched dealers, the house. I was like the guy on the couch. You were playing the video games with the drug dealer in between. I was the lobby. Right. (laughs) While Amir Amir was going. Can I get you a coffee or drink? Yeah. (laughs) Well, he would, I would load the bubbler. We'd play like some, you know, home run derby on PlayStation 2. Yeah. And I was funny. Yeah. So I was like the secretary. Yeah. (laughs) Mr. Amir is weighing out your quarter pound, honey. Take a seat. (laughs) (laughs) Is this your first time buying from him? (laughs) You know, it comes from Victoria, British Columbia. (laughs) Yeah, that's all I did. I love it. And then occasionally he was such a dick to me. And we were friends, but he was like a dick. He was very Long Island, so he was a dick. Oh, he's from Long Island? Yeah, and he would... Fucking Long Island kids. Yeah, and he he would be like, yo, I'll give you an eighth for like $40. Like, that was the discount he was getting me, but he had five pounds of weed in his room. Right. So he would leave, and I'd just go way out an eighth. And then sell it to someone at the radio station, keep the fifty dollars so I had drinking money, and then I'd take a quarter. So you did a little drug dealing? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. You helped sure. him out, yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I yeah. definitely helped him out. Because yeah. it, it benefited me. Right, right, right. But I never wanted to be like, dude, when we got robbed, the guy that he got his weed from right. showed up and he I don't know if I ever told you this. He looked like Napoleon Dynamite, but he carried a desert eagle on him. No. I, I was just talking to my friend Mike about this. Yeah. In, when I did a show in Jersey, because yeah. my friend Mike, who knew all these people, yeah. was like, yeah, dude. And this was at University of Arizona. Arizona. That yeah. was in Tucson. Yeah. Guy would always have a fucking Desert Eagle in his, in his you know, back waist or whatever, and he looked like a dork. And then my roommate was like, yeah, I wouldn't fuck with him. He's fucking crazy. But when we got robbed, he called him to be like, yeah, because I think half the weight was on front. So he had like... What does that mean? Like they he fronted him the weed. So you pay me after you sell it. Right, right, right. So half, it got, you know, so Amir had to make a tough call. Right. He's like, yo, we got robbed. Right. And then the guy's like, I'm going to send someone over so they don't come back in case they're going to come back. And this fucking giant truck came in our back. We lived off a dirt road off like a mountain and Elm. Uh-huh. If you know Tucson, we lived off mountain and Elm. I don't know Tucson. But it, I someone's going to listen to this yeah. and they're going to be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> that dirt road. Yeah. Um, you know, that's where they drove away. They took my car and they drove away. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck. They took the keys from the house. Oh, dude, they, I was hog tied right. in the living room for 20 minutes. When a dude hog ties you. You're very nice about it. He, he was nice about it? No, no, no. Yeah. I was nice yeah. to him about it. He you, was, you were giving, you offered your hands. Yeah. If you watch, <laughs> if you watch, uh, I, I did the story as a bit on this is not happening. That's pretty much the hundred percent truth. Right. Where like the dude pulled a gun on me and, and I was very like, what's up? Right. What do you need? What do you, cause it's, right. 
I'm not going to. I've had a gun pulled up. Yeah, you got shot. You turn into, yeah, not to continue. Customer service. Yeah, you are just customer service. How can I help you? How can I help you? What, what would you like? Yeah, please, you know. Oh my God, you have a gun. I didn't know you were a gun carrying member. <laughs> yeah. I'm Dan. I'm going to lay down. Yeah. I'm very docile. I'm yes. like a feigning goat. Yeah, you you are aware you were going to be Yelp reviewed. But the whiteness in me came out because I was starting to get annoyed because he kept being like, he was fucking with me. Like, he wasn't cool about it. You started it. to complain about it? You're Yo, like, dude. come on, sir. Yeah, you start breathing enough carpet after a while. <laughs> and he's like, where's the fuck? He was like a cholo. And yeah. he's like, where's the fucking money, white boy? Where's the fucking money? And he's like, where's the money, white boy? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and I started getting huffy. I get huffy. That's how my mom gets. Sir, yeah. I told you, but when you're raised, I don't work here. Yeah, when you're raised by a white lady, you and only a white lady, you get that. Right. You get that like, um... I was told that I, and so I fucking, right, I got my- dad's not around to be like, be, son, yes, some people- You don't have a man yeah. to be there to be like, shut up, you yeah. sound like a bitch. Yeah, he's got a gun, he's robbing you. And this dude was like a pro. He was a pro. This wasn't like, hey man, fucking get down on the ground. The guy was like, what's, like that cold, you, you've been around dangerous people. Yeah. They have a very like- I'm not scared of this. There's no warmth. There's no, no, no warmth. Yeah, you very cold. You feel alone. Yes. You feel very alone. Yes. So immediately I'm like, guy, you call the shots. So yeah, he put me in wrist restraints behind my back and then duct taped my feet together. So he didn't get legs to, not a true, from Colorado. Right. It ain't a true hog tag. <laughs> Son, let me show you where you're going wrong. Did you ever go like, hey, I'm not going to cause any problems. You don't really need I, to do this. Yeah. I can just sit on the couch. I can just sit. <laughs> when I saw how professional he was yeah. i was like oh just shut the fuck up let him it's like a it's like a wasp you're right. like just let him go away right like it's like flying around you yeah. it's like if i interfere it's gonna make things 10 times worse right and he busted out a big duffel bag mm -hmm. like an army duffel bag immediately and just cleared my dvds and my playstation 2 games and was like going around the house he took my bubbler threw it in there he was like whatever looked expensive well jokes on him because those things were only valuable for a couple more years suck my dick yeah, it's, it's all like downloadable <laughs> now you idiot <laughs> but he uh the guy was just like i don't give a fuck i was a i was a uh, college white boy this was easy pickings for him yeah and i was i wasn't gonna make it hard for him right right all i wanted to do was smoke a cigarette where was the other guy so when we left which I detail it in the in the story. Where was like, Mr. Long Island? Yo, so I build it up in the bit, but it's true. I went to the bank to do laundry. I turned ten dollars into ten dollars and quarters because I was going to go to our old apartment complex oh, to do at laundry. Star. I just went to Wells Fargo yeah. and I gave them ten dollars and they yeah. gave me ten dollars and quarters. Oh, not even the machine. You spoke to a person. I had to go to like get it because it was too much. Yeah. It was like ten dollars, and I had six loads of laundry in my car. Right. And then First of all, I just gotta say, I love this era in life. It sucks. This era in life is just like when a phone could have taken care of everything. Yeah, you're, but you're also like you're in between childhood and adulthood. Yeah. You're not thinking about goals or what you're gonna do. I was, you're just living with a drug dealer. I was just started doing stand up. <laughs> just started doing comedy. Two thousand. You were banging some woman. Uh, five. Yeah, you were banging that woman who used to put the songs in the car. Oh, sweet you, Dawn. Yeah. Sweet Dawn from Tucson. Dawn and, from Tucson. And I wasn't banging her. No. I, she was an older lady. Yeah. And we would, you know. There she, are no young Dawns. There's no, yeah. <laughs> Dawn, you're born at 35. Yeah. She, uh, <laughs> man, she was just a lady that liked rock and roll and would blow me for CDs. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, whoo, holy shit, dude. That was wild. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I feel like if I would have messed around with her too much, I might have been killed by like a trucker. Right, Like right. I think that's kind of where it would have happened. She would blow you on the side of the road sometimes. Behind an auto zone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've come a long way. Dude, I was trash. I was so <laughs> trash. So, uh, so I had the quarters and then Amir called me and he's like, yo, come over here. There's like, I do this, I do this face. Yeah, it's kind of that's what. But yeah. that's what Amir does. If anyone knows him, yeah. I'm not going to give his last name. I'm not right. going to blow up his shit. But like when he gets nervous, he's yeah. like, yo, are you mad at me? <laughs> like when he knows he does something wrong, yeah. his eye cranks. Yeah. And so my one of my best friends, Mark, that's always our impression of him. Where he's like, yo, Sauda, <laughs> yo, are you mad at me? And I think so, when someone says, are you mad at me? They did something wrong because I was watching this documentary about that guy 
who's the husband of the Real Housewives, Beverly Hills. Oh, the guy that took all the settlement money? The guy money, took all the money, and blew that's it? what he would call his clients. He was stealing their money, and he'd call them and be like, what's wrong? Are you mad at me? Mm-hmm. And it's like- Think about that. Yeah. That's actually a really good point, because when people are like, what's up, baby? Yeah. Are you mad at me? Yeah. He just came back from- It's like, know, why? Are you guilty yeah. of something? Why would just, I be mad at were you? you? Just fucking a stripper? Yeah, like what? Hey, yeah. baby, yeah. are you mad at me that I'm stealing your life insurance money? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty pissed. Yeah. Um, so he called you up. I but he's like, I, hey, come by. There's some shady guys outside. Just drive around and see if they're like out there. And that's what I did. Yeah. And I pulled up and it was this tall white dude with like covered in tattoos right. and this short cholo. And I was like, what's up, guys? And they're like, what's up? Does Tommy Green live around here? That's what they said. That was yeah. exactly the name. Yeah. They go, Tommy Green live around here? I go, no, no, no. I know Tommy's living around here. And they're like, all right, thanks, man. And they walked away. I went upstairs. I was playing Fight Night Round 2 on PlayStation 2. It's like 45 minutes later, smoking weed. Amir's like, yo, I'm going to do the deal. He's like, uh, he's going to meet me outside. So, yo, you want to walk me outside? And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, like walk me to the car, and he convinced me. Amir, Amir is very smart. Yeah, so he's very good at talking people into shit. Yeah. And I, I want to please everybody. Right, right. So he's like, "Why don't you put the gun in your waistband, and you can walk me to the car?" Yeah. And that way, the way he explained it was like, "If they have a knife, you have a gun." And right. I was like, "Yeah, that, that, that does add he's up." He's smart. Yeah, it smart. does make sense. Sure yeah. thing, boss. <laughs> yeah. I was built to call him boss. Yeah. Yeah, boss. Yeah, you were, you were, you were, yeah, yeah, boss. Yeah, yeah boss. boss. Yeah, Walk boss. Walk in the car, boss. Yeah, boss. Yeah. And then I die because yeah. uh, I'm a henchman. I have, sure, henchman, boss. I yeah. have henchman brain. Yeah. Right. Now, if they point their gun at you, yeah, boy. Oh, you're gee, a- boss, we're going to make a lot of money <laughs> off this score. <laughs> so he fucking, we step outside and we, we lived on the second floor and we had these like metal stairs and he had a bag with all the weed in it and he was first, I was second. Thank fucking God because I would have been dead. Right. And he went first, and the white dude came around the corner, gun drawn, and like pushed Amir and grabbed the bag and took off that. But I, I just saw him come around and then followed was that five foot four fucking the cholo. blood in, blood yeah. out, yeah. who was just right on me. Yeah. Just gun right on me. And you're like, don't yeah. move, and then the, eh? the second I did that, my shirt went up and he saw the gun. Ooh. And I was like, well, we you're have like, ourselves. It's, it doesn't look like what you think it looks like. And he was like, <laughs> he just kept going, put your hands down. Put your fucking hands down. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, God. oh, God. Does this mean I die? Yeah. <laughs> Does this mean I die? Yeah. And then, yeah. And then, you know, like, if you want to hear, like, the full details of the story, but it went through and he ended up taking my car keys, starting my car, and then going downstairs. And I so heard he patted him. you down. He took it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's the punchline. Yeah. I don't want to ruin the punchline, but the punchline is he found the change. Right. And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a criminal more disappointed. <laughs> He's like, he's just wading through quarters. Yeah. He had cargo shorts on. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a white dude in Arizona. Yeah. So I had cargo shorts yeah. on. And he was like, oh, son of a bitch. Yeah. He's just fucking pulling yeah. through it. Now you got a real, you got a real uh, Arizona tattoo. Which right? one? The, the tribal one? Yeah. Let's I had it covered up. You did? What, yeah. you, what is it now? Oh, it's a forest. Let me see. So yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's my dead aunt's initials. <laughs> so you have you fixed you. you I fixed it. You went over it. Yeah, I, my my buddy Keith helped me fix it. It and used put to a, just be a tribal. It was woo. Yeah. It wasn't Arizona. I got that in Aurora. Aurora. Shout yeah. out Colorado. Yeah. I mean, but that was it was true Aurora. In fact, I got it on Iliff and Chambers. Yeah. At the Aurora it's Tattoo like a state shop. ID from Colorado. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I you can, can show you. Your cop could be like, "Can I see your license or let me see your tribal tattoo?" And he goes, "Oh, you're, oh, you're from Aurora." <laughs> yeah, you're from Aurora. Yeah, he goes, "Oh, cool. All right." <laughs> yeah, that's how I can always get back in. Colorado's yeah. getting popular, but I can always get back in when I when I show him the original. <laughs> I have the original on my phone. I'll show you the original. I got a horrible one too. I mean, you do? Yeah, yeah. yeah the I got bear the worst trap. one. I should fix it, right? Yeah, dude. What it, should I turn that into? I don't, I don't know, know, but it maybe is. I'll turn it into a forest, dude. I got, I got to find it. Yeah, dude, forest. I like is how going... you describe that as a forest. Whatever, dude. Yeah, it's just more. Do you ever see Joe DeRosa's just fix this with black? Yeah, he just like, yeah, that's the original one, brother. <laughs> there you go, brother. <laughs> My boy Dan's coming uh, over. He just comes over. I see a picture yeah, you there in like a. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, well, it's like four different ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I picture you just coming over my place, like with a uh, Kevin Johnson Phoenix Suns jersey. Fuck that, dude. I would have came over in a Matumbo. Matumbo. I would have came in a Mount Matumbo jersey. I'd be like, what's going on? My name's Dan. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm over. Yeah. I mean, I was like, 
Aurora is a suburb. So I grew up in the suburbs, right. but there's parts of Aurora that are fucking rough. But I think it gets a bad rap when you're like, man, it's like affordable suburbs. Yeah. My, I had a single mom that lived there and I had a great, outside of my family shit. Right. It was awesome. Right. It was all a green belt, right? Ride to the park. You know what I mean? Right. I knew people that were like shady because you come in contact with shady people. But where I grew up in my core group of friends, we're all great people. Right. I just, you know, my family was just fucking me constantly. Right. Right. With Joe around getting hammered. How long was Joe around for? I want to say 12 to 16. Wow. Day he moved out, the day those flip flops clapped down that garage hallway for the last time <laughs> was the day my sister got killed. Oh. A little bittersweet of an ending. Yeah. Because he was moving. And I just remember the last time I ever talked to Joe, he was holding a box and he was moving out and he looked at me and he went, Sorry about Michelle. And I was like, ah, shit. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. I had to say thank you. Is this your full sister? Half sister. My dad's daughter from his first marriage. Right. But you guys were close. Yeah. She came into my life when I was like eight or nine and we got real close. Yeah. We got real close and she died when I was 16. Right. So yeah, it was my mom. My mom was real big on that. My mom yeah. was awesome. Yeah. My mom was a great mom with a couple bad years. Right. You know, like Peyton Manning had a couple bad seasons. Right. So she was kind of like. I would say she was kind of like, I'm trying to think of an athlete who had a couple bad years. Yeah, I mean, like... She, she was like Chauncey Billups. I mean, <laughs> just the king of Park Hill, I mean, baby. that's a pretty perfect analogy. She's Mr. Big Shot. Yeah, she. I mean, he, you know, because he had like a couple bad years, and then he kind of... Minnesota, awesome, yeah. Boston. And then he became... And the, then he goes to Detroit. And it really turned around. Comes to the Nuggets. Yeah. Yeah, I would say, yeah, my mom's the Chauncey Billups of moms. <laughs> A great mom with a couple bad years. got a couple court cases that we're worried about yeah but yeah. beyond that yeah 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 she um but that was like you know i've talked to her that's what's great about when you grow up man i've always thanked you for getting me into therapy because you're the person I'm back in it yeah yeah we see the same therapist again but you were the guy that got me to go see him yes and that's what saved my mom and i's relationship yeah because i was able through him to be like He's like, no, 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 no. You hold her accountable. Yeah. You want, the, you know? Yeah. And that's a tough thing for a person to learn when you're like, especially an only child. Yeah. Because it's like, you don't have anybody there to be like, that's right. That's wrong. Right, 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 right. Everything's a guess. Right, right. So you're like, is this, is this bad? Right. Is this good? Right. And then throwing alcohol and shit gets fucking crazy. Right. No, alcohol does not lead to the best decision usually. No, and yeah. also for a child... That I'd say almost always, no. He, always. Yeah. And when a kid is drinking, or when a kid's around drinking, you don't know why the decisions are being made. Right. You don't have that warm feeling in your stomach where you're like, fuck it, we'll eat dinner at 11 tonight. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> like, I'm fucking hammered. I'm enjoying this sunset. Right. Kid can eat fucking late. That was like my dad. My dad was just like, eh, fuck it. We'll eat at 11. My mom was always like, dinner's at 6. We're gonna eat, but you know, right. have some cocktails before right. then. Right, might get a little loose lipped at dinner. Because like, even when a woman drinks, she still keeps that womanly, the motherly, internal instinct. instinct. Her mother, in like she turned on. Joe. Your dad's just like, you want to eat tonight, dude? And my if dad you said did. no, he'd be like, okay. My dad didn't give a fuck. Right. Hey guys, I'm very excited about this new sponsor that we have that could be very helpful to all of us. We've all had credit card debt. We've all piled on different types of debt and have monthly payments that we got to make and it feels like you're drowning and it feels overwhelming. The wise thing to do is to consolidate that debt and make it so you are making 0% interest monthly payments. Nobody better in the game that does that for you than PDS Debt. Purity Debt Solutions. Guys, what they are offering my fans right now is a $25 Visa gift card. All right? All you have to do is go to pdsdebt.com, wherever it is, slash fumes. You know the promo code, www.pdsdebt.com com slash fumes and take back your financial freedom today by visiting that website you my friends right will receive customized programs for any of you struggling with credit card debt personal debt student loans medical bills collections anything any type of debt all right all you have to do is go to their website take their quiz right? It's a quick online debt assessment quiz. It's like a survey and you will find out how much you can save. So go to 
pdsdebt.com slash fumes and find out how to resolve your debt right now. This is a sponsor that can help your life and it is awesome. Go get yourself that $25 Visa gift card right now and be proactive about your debt, whatever kind of debt it is. I had medical bills. I had um, credit card bills. I used PDS debt. It's really amazing these sponsors have helped me and they can help you. So pdsdebt.com slash fumes right now. Answer all those questions. Let them hum- help understand what your situation is and how they could get you to 0% interest monthly payments. There's no minimum credit score required. So anyone and everyone can go and get this help. So go, be proactive, and uh, get rid of your debt. What's the dollars? Guys, this is our most important sponsor. Anyone listening to this podcast has to be fumes free at this point. Okay, you gotta be a black belt in combat and fumes, and there's only one way to do that seriously. It is with Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0, brother. Do you know how many other razors there are out there, clippers out there? You throw them on your balls, your balls end up looking like they were in a knife fight. That's not what we're trying to do here. You wanna get yourself some actual apparatus. That's plural for apparatus. You want to get yourself a razor that is meant for this job. It's a dirty job. And there's only one tool that can do it. That is the Manscaped Lawn Mower 4.0, brother. It's a fourth generation trimmer that features advanced skin safe technology and reduces grooming needs, brother. If the power goes out in Texas again, you can use your lawnmower 4.0 to illuminate your area because it's got LEDs. It's got an LED spotlight in there because you can save on your electric bill. Don't even turn the lights on. Okay, make it a nightclub party. Trim your balls in the dark. Throw on some fucking club music and throw on your lawnmower. Dun, 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 dun. When you when you mow it down, you got to mow down your fumes, fellas. You cannot go out there with a fro on your piece. That glue gun has got to be pristine. You are your glue gun's barber, and Manscaped gives you the tools. Here is the deal: go to manscaped.com. All right, what is the promo code? Fumes. You get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code Fumes. Go to manscaped.com, put in the promo code Fumes, and here's the deal. Manscaped will even throw in two free gifts to their performance package for Point oh. You get some boxers, you get a nice little travel bag. It's beautiful. The boxers are great, and everyone loves a travel bag. They can put their toiletries in, and you could store your Manscaped 4.0 lawnmower and all the other products that are in the performance package. I mean, dude, this 4.0 with the LED light, I mean, it is fucking lee. Guys, the kit is amazing. They just launched this 4.0 performance package and their Shears 2.0 nail grooming kit. So you groom down your nails, you groom down your balls, and also the hair on top of your balls. Give your dick a haircut right now. You also get the weed whacker. It's waterproof and uses a 9,000 RPM motor powered 360 degrees rotary dual plate system. I don't understand that, but it gives you a nice close crop shave. It's got, it comes with nose and ear hair trimmers. It's incredible. Get the whole package, manscaped.com, promo code fumes. There's two options when you come from, um, when you come from that part of the country, right? And you have the talent that you have. You're either going to become the hottest character, colorful local DJ on a morning show. <laughs> Which I fucking really thought that's what or I was going to do. Or you shoot for the coasts. Yeah, you got to go to the coast. Yeah, you got to go to the coast. The, my benefit was I... In, there, in a parallel universe, there's another Dan who's going, it. wake up everybody oh, at 6.30. Dude. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck beating him on KTCL 93.3. <laughs> 
dominating the morning, dominating the number twenty four market in the yeah. country. Because you got the voice and the talent. You got, just you're broad, you got to be broadcasting. That would be weird if I walked into an Odo Zone and I heard that voice dude, if I and was, you started doing fucking characters. And yeah. I'd be like, dude, what are you doing here? What are you go, doing here? I go, hey I'm boss. You like Ben Affleck. I'm like, if you're here in the fucking morning. <laughs> I go, hey boss, your battery's coming right up. Yeah. Don't worry, we got it. Hey, your battery's coming up. You go, you just did danger field. I go, ah, fuck around in the back. I'll see you later. Yeah, I. Um, here's the thing: is like. I think because I wasn't, I didn't have the encouragement of being like, you're so great. You got to go. Do, like my mom always believed in me, but when I le I knew I had to get out of Colorado because I was like, I just, this is so nice. I'm so comfortable here. Right. Colorado's beautiful. Right. People are nice. The weather's great. Right. Everything's great. Can't breathe as well. You, you get used it. to that. Yeah. You, you yeah. evolve. Yeah. When I moved to Arizona, I didn't like anything about it except the, the immigration laws, which you were a fan of. Loved it. <laughs> Loved not acknowledging Martin Luther King Jr. Dude, that was the craziest. Arizona's wild. Arizona's but... like, yeah, we just started doing MLK Day. Yeah. You're like, now? They just pull you over in Arizona. They're like, what I do? They said, uh, you're driving brown. Do my so favorite we thing. We need to check on your papers. The craziest shit in the world that no one believed me was Arizona. When you renew your license, they give it to you for 50 years. My Arizona's driver's license, when I moved so out they here, don't check in again. expired in 2049. Wow. And I had to get a New York license because yeah. I, when I moved here, to like to vote and shit. Yeah. But they were like, I had a bar, Smith's, which was on 8th Avenue by um, the Laugh Factory that turned into Times Square Art Center. Right. I would try to go to their drink. And they sometimes wouldn't let me in the bar because they're like, this is a fake idea. I'm like, it's an Arizona driver's license. You're saying, yeah, there's no driver's license. Hey, pal, there's no driver's license that expires in 2100. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you don't understand. People in Arizona are comfortable with that. <laughs> but I moved there and didn't, I made friends, but I wasn't, like Arizona's uh, b beautiful people go there with money. Now you were going to the University of Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all frats right. and like uh, rich kids. Yeah, it's it's huge. It's a massive school. It's like right? Forty five thousand yeah. undergrad. When you go to one of those schools, you're just like, are you even in school? No. Really? Yeah. You, I, I took classes that I kind of want to take. I got into college radio, and then I started. What my big push was, I got hired at KFMA, which right. is ninety two point one. They 101. heard you on the college radio. No, I went and bothered them. You did. Yeah, I was like, can I please have a job? Because right. I ran out of money. Right. I worked in Alaska, right. and I made a bunch of money one summer. Yeah, and I came back and fucking. Blew through it. Right. Just that, blew through it. Which, in you, the white trash way possible. I'd go to Costco yeah. and just buy booze uh -huh. and frozen sandwiches. <laughs> and then just fucking cigarettes. And I would... You oh. worked on a... Yeah, that's when you went... I worked went on to, the docks. You went on the docks and you worked on a boot. No, I wasn't on the boat. Uh, I, was, I worked at the cannery. Right. I worked at the... I was a dock crew member. And what would you guys do there? My job was to fill the hopper with fish yeah. and to unload the boats. Yeah. But like the guys I worked with were like real men. Yeah. So I was like, that's what. Did they call you the kid? No, yeah. I was funny. Yeah. So they liked me. Yeah. That's when I was like, I'm going to do stand up. Right. Because I was up there and I was like, if I'm making these guys. And what made you decide to go to Alaska? My place? aunt was living up. My dad's sister was living up there and she had cancer. And she was like. You should come up here. Right. What are you going to do anyways? And I was right. like, probably working at Applebee's in Aurora <laughs> and spend all my money on weed. So it was like, it was the best decision. I moved up to Kenai yeah. to live with her. And I worked at a, you know, at a cannery up there. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, I met awesome dudes. That, isn't it really funny that, that part in life where you don't have direction yet? It's a really funny time in life. Like, I don't know, I'm going to work at Applebee's or I'll go to Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> it really became, I think, like a two conversation thing. It's a really great thing. It's a great time though because you explored things and I didn't have anybody. Yeah. I didn't. Ha I was nineteen. Yeah, I had no money, and I was like, "Fuck it, what's up? At what's Alaska like?" Yeah, and then I moved up there, and it was like my aunt Karen was so funny. Yeah, she was so there's so even funny. another parallel universe where you meet a girl in Alaska. Yeah, you there settle was. Down. There was this Filipino girl that you worked your own the, boat. There was this <laughs> Filipino girl that worked at the cannery that I had a huge crush on, and she liked me, uh -huh. but she broke her, her wrist, got hurt. And they like when they treat you like fucking horses out there. Like if you get hurt, they put you down. They're yeah. Like you can't work a sixteen-hour <laughs> yeah. shift. Yeah. I yeah. And so my la I had to leave early because I got a consumption ticket. I got a drinking ticket in Colorado. Mm -hmm. So I had to like kind of come back early to settle that before I went back to school. What does that mean? You got uh, I got caught drinking at a house party oh. in Boulder. I went to go visit like, friends at Colorado. Under, underage or yeah. Uh -huh. 
Or this was this was uh, in Aurora. I got caught. I just right. got caught drinking. Right. And they were like, we got to go to court for that. It's right. a ticket or you got to take a class. Right. And so I had to go back to do that before I could go back to college. Right. And so I left early. So she was gone when I was like leaving. And she, then she came back when I was gone. But there really wasn't Facebook or MySpace or anything. So it was like, we just missed. Two boats missed each other. But right. like, I liked her and she liked me. Yeah. And there's a chance. I was horny. Right. So I could... Might have had a kid in Alaska if yeah. it would have timed out wrong. What happened to her wrists? Yo, man, the, the back-breaking work they make those processors do, she was a processor. Right. I was dock crew, so it was like the cast system. Huh. Like the fact that I was like, oh, look at that beautiful processor. Because <laughs> <laughs> they just chop. They all do one thing. They like chop, but they're you know, using a knife for <laughs> fucking 16 hours a day. Right, so that's what it was. Yeah. And so I think she got like something yeah. fucked up. Did she ever give you? You never hooked up with her then? No, no, no. no. We'd flirt. Give you a handy. It would have been a. It would have been Woo! a strong handy. She could have tossed me out to yeah. sea. You, you'd have been like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Like, no, no, asshole, no, 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 no. I want to keep going. My ass was done. My ass was getting sucked through my pee hole. <laughs> you got to fucking stop. Stop. <laughs> loose, 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 loose. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know what's. I don't know any Tagalog or yeah. I tell you to stop. <laughs> But you, she, were you uh, up there in the summers when it was like 24 hours? Yeah, I was up there May. I, I moved up there like f- second week of May and I came back in August. That must have been trippy to be up there when it was you all sun. You had to put sun. thick blankets on your windows. Is that how you just fall asleep? Or you work fucking 14 hours. Yeah. And then you fall asleep pretty goddamn easy. Yeah. So you were up there just cracking jokes. I was making them laugh. We'd get high at lunch and I would do impressions that now would get me canceled, but I was doing like making fun of people. <laughs> I was doing Alan. What are you going to no, do? No, there's there's a guy. There was a guy I worked with named um, uh, uh, Aladdin, and he had four teeth on his bottom gums. Those were the only teeth in his head, and he ran ran the processors. Dude was like a fucking tyrant, but everything when I was cut. So they brought us in to like basically audition us to see if we were good enough to work on the dock crew, and we had to. Pitch halibut. Yeah, there it is. And you're like, God, I can smell that. Fuck, I can smell that. Just when you were telling me when you were telling me what you did, I could smell it too. Yeah. It's It's one of those jobs you can smell. Yeah. And um Aladdin would always walk by and just with his four bottom teeth out, he'd be like, It's not good. It's not good. (laughs) When I'd cut it, he goes, It's not good. (laughs) One time I was driving a forklift and I couldn't line it up, and he goes, You have girlfriend? I go, No, why? He goes, I know. You have bad aim. (laughs) And like, kill him, yeah. kill him. Yeah, All yeah. the processors are laughing. And I'm like, shut up, Aladdin. <laughs> weep, weep, weep. Like pulling it back, trying to get the fork cut. It was just the best job of being like, you ain't shit. Everyone here works. It was the first time I ever worked a job where someone gave up hours. Someone would vulture on them. Every other job, right. people were looking to get out of shifts. Right. I don't want to work today. I'm tired. That was like, I'll take your hours. Right. Put your hours on my check. Right. Those motherfuckers are there to work. Right. You'll never meet harder workers than the people that work there. Right. They work the hardest out of anybody I've ever seen in my life. Right. Right. Which coming into comedy, bunch of fucking babies. Right. Five shows in a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I always catch That's myself like me. on the I gotta do two tonight. Oh, uh, two on a Saturday. <laughs> I better get a Gatorade. <laughs> Meanwhile, these people fucking can't feel their feet and they're just like, cool, dump another fucking thousand pounds of chum salmon into the yeah. hopper. So if you're if you don't have a father figure in your life, you, at all. You go to Alaska at all. and I didn't become have, a man. I didn't have an uncle. Yeah. I didn't have nobody. So you went to Alaska and became a man. That's where you became a man. Yeah, I'm, I learned on the job. Yeah, you learned on the job out there. Because I am. I think I got a lot. When you're raised by a single mom, you get a lot of, when you're an only child, you get a lot of uh, bitchy qualities. Yeah. Not yeah. in a way of like, you just do. Yeah. You see, women deal with problems in different ways. Right. You right. know? And that's why I like, thank God I'm not a serial killer. Right. Right. Yeah. Thank women, God I don't fucking. Well, they, all serial killers usually live with their moms. Yeah, and I know. There's usually no guy. Well, I'm well aware, dude. Yeah. When you come close to becoming something, you go. That. Yeah, but you didn't. You didn't have that in you. I know. I can't. Yeah. I'm too. I'm too nice. Did you write your mom? Because it was just you and your mom. Did you write your mom like, dearest? What was your mom's no, name again? Man, my mom's, my mom's Trish. Uh, dearest Trish. No, no, no. I'm Hell, up here in Alaska. Yo, there was this. The fishing is fine. There was this girl I was in love with in Aurora. That strung me along for like four or five years. I was in love with. I just oh my! I'd listen to Dave Matthews Band and be like, "Satellite, strung from the moon." (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And then she was just like, just like toying with me. Yeah. 
and roaming. Remember roaming minutes yes. on cell phones? Yes. Y'all would call her from Alaska because right. I had a cell phone. Right. And my mom still paid it because I was right. 19. Was she like a well-off girl? No. Okay. No, this no, maybe no. Like she your... was from a worse neighborhood than I was from. Okay. I thought this might have been your notebook. No, 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 no. You saw that <laughs> later when living in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember your notebook. Everyone has a notebook. Yeah. yeah. I had a notebook too. Yeah, but- um, I told you about my I, I kind of talked to you about my notebook. You experience. helped me yeah. through it. Yeah. We're standing in the doorway of the yeah. stand, the old stand. But um, I called her. And I'd be like, hey. By the way, I didn't know at the time. She's just hooking up with my friend Joey. But I'm calling her. It's a lot of Joes who are getting their dicks. I don't dicks trust the in, Joseph. Yeah, Joes are getting their dicks in your business. DeRosa, <laughs> stay away from my lady. Um, but I there, could have told you that one. <laughs> yeah, but there was, um, I remember calling her. One, of, They made us do like busy work until the fish season started. And I had to paint all of the dorms where all the processors were living. And like paint the buoys. And like we had to paint everything. And I remember calling her and being like, Hey, you know, when you just have like doormat energy. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, you're going to work at Bennigan? That's mm-hmm. cool, cool, cool. Oh, there's a guy in your apartment fucking you. That's uh, cool. Like cool. you gotta you gotta Hey, can you tell Joey I said what's up? Yeah, hey. I mean it's cool. You know, I get Mama kick his ass in video games like oh. yeah. <laughs> I didn't know until I got back and they're like, Yeah, you know Joey was like hanging out there the whole summer. I'm like, fucking sick. Um uh, so I called her on roaming minutes mm-hmm. and I would go to my aunt's house when I would get a day off. When I get a day off, I would I call my aunt and I'd be like, "Hey, if she wasn't working at the hospital, she worked at the hospital and was also sick and getting treated at the hospital." So she, I would call her and I'd be like, "Hey, come pick me up. I got a day." And then we go to the liquor store and we go to like the grocery store. My aunt could cook, so we'd have like steaks and fucking sit around and get fucked up on her deck, and it was light the whole night. We'd watch stand up. She was the first person that I was like. In my family, that I was like, do you think I could do stand-up? We were watching Daniel Tosh on Comedy Central. I was like, do you think I could do stand-up? And she was like, yeah, you could do stand-up. Like, didn't even blink. She's like, yeah, yeah, you're funny enough. And I was like, that was the first time I was like, whoa, shit. And then making those guys laugh in Alaska, I was like, maybe I can. But, yo, I, we went to the grocery store. And we came home, and it was answering machines. And my aunt hit play. And she's like, I've been saving this for you. She's like, check this voicemail out. Voice message. And it was like, boo. Left at Tuesday, 5.37 p.m. It was like... Was it Joe? Boop. Dan, you're still a retard. Hey, what's up, Tardo? <laughs> I'm, Hope you don't fall in the water. I'm back at your mom. Yeah. She was lonely while you're oh, gone. Oh, now we're doing anal. I wish we were here. I'm doing it on your dad's ashes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. They, I got a voice... Ma- the voice message is my mom, and she's like, Hi, Karen. It's Trish. <laughs> Can you tell my son that I got his cell phone bill and it is not big. It is huge. And she fucking goes off. And she's like, tell him if he wants to call people. And it was like. It was all her. It calls to her. It was calls to my, the, yeah. the, 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 you know, and yeah. calls to my mom. But I called yeah. my mom from my aunt's house. Yeah, so yeah. it was long distance. It was yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long distance was, what year was this? Long distance, you could get, you could get sledgehammered. Yeah, I think that was still long distance. You could still get sledgehammer, but yeah. it's roaming right, on roaming. a cell phone. Yeah. What was it? you have a big Nokia? I had a I had the little one. Oh, I had the yeah. little one with the green yeah. light under it. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. yeah you didn't te- text wasn't a thing yet. Yeah, those were like almost too small. You yeah. hold it here and it wouldn't even be close to your <laughs> yeah, mouth. You'd be like, I said I'm sorry. <laughs> I said I'm sorry. So yeah, we uh there you right there. Yeah, I that had was that it. one too. Yeah. That was exactly it. Yeah. That yeah. was exactly the cell phone. God, that phone smelled like fish. Yo, oh Your my phone God. smelled like, You just smelled like fish for the whole fucking summer. Dude, me and my friend. When you walk through Chinatown in summer, you're just probably like, no big deal. I'm like, what's up, boys? Yeah. What do you guys got in? A fresh bat? <laughs> I, we went to McDonald's, which was like a treat. Because McDonald's in Alaska is expensive. Because they got to fucking ship it up there. So oh. like a fucking Big Mac meal is like eight ninety nine in O2 prices. Wow. So we went up there. We went to McDonald's for lunch because we were like fuck it let's go to mcdonald's and we were this little boy was in line in front of us in front of his mom and he's like you know little kids they don't know how to talk quietly yeah and he like leans into his mom he's like those men smell bad (laughs) and we were like all right kid (laughs) just covered it we were in our slicks and you're like shut up i I actually know i think we're just in our jeans and our sweatshirts we're like shut up fucking i feel like kids are often the ones that give away that their parents are racist yeah yeah, they'll be like in the supermarket look mommy there's a and she's like shut up shut up (laughs) shut up kids and dogs yeah your dog's like like, i don't yell at the tv yeah (laughs) We're cool. No problem. I'm, we're fine. 
Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I don't know what it is. My I, dog always I don't know what his Mexicans. energy is. It's like, I think I know why that might be. Oh, maybe you should stop yelling out your political opinions in front of your terrier. <laughs> Yeah, it was, but that experience, man, like it just made me realize you're never working harder than someone out there. There's, Interesting. There's yeah. people that are working way harder than you and doing zero complaining. Right. Zero complaining. We're in the complaint generation right now. Right. Um, it was good, yeah. but yeah, it, everyone, every vacation I've ever heard of my friends, it was good, but yeah, but you know what? It's you. You can't. You can't blame them too much because they weren't exposed. Nobody's exposed to that. Yeah. That's what the thing is, is like yeah. the amenities of modernity. Ding! Yeah. <laughs> Every time I say that, we ding. Um, we just live in that. So nobody's exposed to hard work. You yeah. can't even, if you wanted to get a hard work job, I don't know if you could get one in New York City. Like, like a construction job? Like you, that's about it. Like, uh, but most people. Just go down to the fish market, go down to the docks and see if, if they need help unloading shit. Yeah, but it's few. It, whereas it used now to be, it's union, and so it's like you can't even get in. You can't even like, get in. Why, why do you want a job? Yeah, and oh, it, nice. that used to be all jobs. Like yeah. your dad worked at a factory. Or, you know, like my grandparents. They also they all used to the the wealth disparity. They used to pay a livable wage. That's why the middle middle class existed. Right. You could go work. You could go work at a factory, and your kid could go to SUNY Binghamton, and you'd be like, eh, because it's in the state, I pay a little bit of money. They got to work a summer job to cover it. But they went to SUNY Binghamton, and now they're an English teacher at PS 161. <laughs> yeah. And as everyone was happy. Yeah, yeah. But now everyone has this, I think what it is, is everyone feels the that they're owed celebrity. Right. That's how social media is marketed. Right. You're owed fans. Right. No, you're not. Right. I know so many comedians that don't deserve the fans they have. Right. It's like, you're not funny. You don't make right. me laugh. Right, right, right. But you can't say that. No. Because if you fucking say that, someone above you is going to be like, you're you're giving it away. Right. You're letting him you're letting people know they shouldn't be paying money for this. Right, right. A lot of y'all are wasting money. A lot <laughs> of y'all are wasting money. <laughs> There's like ten people you should give money to to be funny. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well I love Chappelle. That's the downside I, to democ it's like it's the democratization of it's what it celebrity. Is. So it's like it's all available. And, uh, Patton Oswald yeah. said something like in 2000. It'll, it inevitably becomes less efficient. If there's one thing you can give to dictatorships, they, keep, they run a tight ship. A lot of people die, but they, they run a yeah, tight ship. A lot ship. of people die, but they run a tight ship. They're like, here's your comedian. Here's your food. Yeah. Here's and your there is, yeah. It is awesome to have an option. And it is awesome to have like a choice of like, I'm going to support this guy. And there is a cool, listen, it's, it's all like we were talking about before the show. It's all balanced. Yeah. Like, if there's a lot of shit, there's also a lot of good. Yeah. It's it's more like DIY, you can pick which guy you like, and then when they win, you feel like you won. And that's fucking really cool. Because that's how I felt about Bill Burr. Yeah. We all knew about Bill Burr 2005, 2006, 2007, and then he starts getting big in 08, 09, and 2010, and you're like, that's our guy. That's right. our band. Right, right. Me, you, and Nate used to go watch him right. and be like, this is the guy. And then people, other people who don't know comedy go, this is the guy. And you're like, I know, that's our guy. Right. We've been pushing it. You right. know, like, we've been not pushing him, but like, we knew about it. He was our favorite. Yeah, he was. He, we knew he was. And that's the what's best. fun with bands. Yeah, it's like you're like, oh, I like this band. But however, now you're just seeing like a lot of boy bands. Yes, a lot of bands that are that are built with other things besides music. Right. It's a but, look. It's a fucking. If I see one more fucking comedy hype video, stop it. Well, it's a comedy hype video. Just a slow pan up in a Drake song, and someone <laughs> shuts the door, and it's a line at a fucking funny bone. <laughs> And they're like, all I do is win. I'm a baller. You're silly. You fucking idiots. You're silly. Be silly. That's what comedy is. It's being silly. All I do is win and get pussy, make money. And then it's you on stage being like, hey, my dog shit in the carpet. Fuck all of it. I know what Fuck you're talking cool about. Fuck cool comedy. I know what you're talking about. Fuck cool comedy. And I'm friends with people that do cool comedy and I love them. But fuck it in general. <laughs> All I do is win. <laughs> All I do is win. A joke always hits. No. <laughs> Nate Bargetti. I'm the greatest of all time. I call this the Nate Bargetti golden rule of comedy. <sighs> For a joke to be funny. You got to you, show yourself. You cannot win in the yeah, joke. Yeah, that's his. I know. So how are you making hype videos where all you're doing is winning? Right, right. You want to know my, I, I sit uncomfortably in a free t-shirt. <laughs> 
Because my 38-year-old tits. Uncle Paulie's. Uncle Paulie's. <laughs> the line starts to the right. But it's like my body shit because I was eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for a year. Yeah. I'm sweating uncontrollably. <laughs> I'm talking about my dad's best friend who was just boning my mom, making my teenage years rough. But it's like I, I get frustrated because I want comedy to be that, but not everyone does. And I need to shut the fuck up about that. Right. That's where I learn I need to shut you the fuck gotta up. You just got to make you, what you want to make. Exactly. Because what I make it, isn't yeah. what someone else is going to make. Right. And honestly, I'm jealous of those people that can do cool comedy. Right. I would love to feel cool. Right. I would love to feel right. cool. We're all different. It's a different, yeah. I, I, I would, yeah. It's yeah. just like. I think we're in the era where you have to find the people who are into what you do by putting it out there. Exactly. For them to find it. And yeah. also you can learn a lot. Because whoever's people. into cool comedy is not going to be into not, you. Not into or, me. Yeah, yeah. They're going to call, they're going to be like, this fucking pussy. Yeah, you're like, yeah. yeah, I am a pussy. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. up? And then people that are like, oh, I feel like a pussy. I yeah. can fucking listen to this guy. It's almost, to, it's almost as if we are all bands now. Yes. Like, because like. There's no labels. There's no fans. There's no la I mean, there's no, I'm sorry. There's no celebrity that everyone knows about. Yeah. There's everyone has like their market, their niche following. And people and are going to pop up and come back down and pop yeah. back up. And by the way, I love when I see people that, I, that, I, that I've seen work so hard arrive there. Mm -hmm. Tim Dillon, Andrew Schultz, Mark Norman. You see people that you're like, fuck yes. Go support those guys. Because I've known them. I've watched them put in the work. Yeah, they definitely put in the work. They put in the work. Yeah. And you're like, you know. You got to respect the fact that, and then when other people give in, you're like, fuck yes. So there are wins, but then there's losses where you're like, this fucking guy? Yeah. This fucking guy? Well, the good thing about the internet too is like, it used to be like only 10 guys yes. had the chance to have a career. It's and like, then yeah. everyone else was just wallowing around. And like, it's like, the good thing about it is you don't have to, if you don't do that type of humor where it like, it's for everybody, you can have a career. Yeah. Like could. on my last episode, I made a joke about how, Bill Cosby, maybe the women he raped was reparations. Most of them were, you know, you can't, I can't make that joke and then knock on CBS's door. Yeah. Hey guys. Yeah, can I get a sitcom? <laughs> but you know what's crazy? I was saying through a critical race theorist's but, perspective. But I wasn't where, saying it was But it's also funny because it's, it's like. it's a joke, yeah. It's a funny joke yeah. where you're like, yeah, you're joking. I'm you're joking. not saying that yeah. in a dissertation. You're not writing that out and being like, I actually truly believe that maybe right. the United States served its reparations through handing sleepy white women to Bill Cosby. <laughs> you don't exactly fucking, it, yeah. you don't fucking say that, right. but it's like. What, where I don't like, where I think it's really But the broke. internet I'm saying is you can say that, put it out there, and people who like it can find you. That's my problem yeah. still is like when the main, like when big companies, you do a great thing, but they don't do their research. Shane Gillis on SNL is the best example. You on SNL. Well, that, no, that was, I was, I didn't have a good audition and Pete was a better story. That's a different thing. Shane got the job. Was it just between you two? No, it was like me, Pete, Andrew Santino. Yeah. Uh, Frank Garcia Helge. There was like yeah. a couple people. But your talent. I wasn't ever supposed to, to be sketch comedy. I wasn't ever supposed to be there. Right. I, I needed things to, work out for a reason or whatever. But I was never supposed to do it. The bonfire. Yeah. Fucking stand up billions. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. No yeah. gripes. Yeah. Shane got hired, and they didn't do their research. And then someone was like, "Hey, he said one questionable thing." Had right. they done their research, they'd right. be like, "Well, he says some wild shit, but he's funny." Right. He's undeniably funny. Right. And then they're like, well, I got ah! yeah. all, all, all corporations do that. Yeah, they all, want the cool thing that all the kids like, and then they buy it, and then they're like, well, you know there's another side to it. Yeah. Well, you know what? There's always another side to it. It's always. just that now it's recorded. Yeah, I know. I mean, you, you tell me John Belushi didn't sit around high on PCP and say a few questionable things? Yo, I have the- Really, he just went there and be like, guys, we got to really close the wage gap I, while he was high on PCP. <laughs> I have, I have the, you're wearing a Bill Murray shirt. Yeah. I have the Bill Murray theory that one inch off, Bill Murray, Bill Murray's the biggest asshole in the world. One inch off. How's that? He misses the mark by an inch. He's a twat. Yeah. Showing up at people's weddings, right. bartending. Right, right. You're like, fuck you, old guy that was on SNL. Right. Are you, are you paid a thousand dollars for that right. bartender. He has a 1-800 number where he they send. He doesn't call his agent yeah. back. There's just a lot he of things. He doesn't have an agent, I don't think. Uh, yeah, but then like he's Bill Murray. So yeah. he, can, he does it. Right. He just does it. Right. And he's awesome. Right. And he's like, you want to bump into him. Right. But I'm telling you, everybody's got their like. One inch. Everybody's good and everybody's bad. Right. It's just what they yes, choose to go. Of course, to unless you're Jesus. Which, which there's only one. God. And that's the true purpose of this podcast. We it's want you guys to find Jesus. Fine. We're going to do a little cool down <laughs> session here. We want you to read some of our favorite excerpts from the King James Bible. 
let's start with a letter to Corinthians. What is? Did you ever? Did you, was there any religion in your life? My mom was Irish Catholic and was discommunicated. So why do you have no brothers and sisters? Besides? She was discommunicated from the church. Oh, that's why. Yeah. And when she got she got married, she would have kept going. Those Irish pussies, boy, they're like car factories. That's like a Japanese Lexus. I'd be, I'd be, there'd be Daniel, Steve, and Michael. <laughs> they'd be all biblical. Jonathan, Good Peter, hunting. Yeah. Peter, Cole. <laughs> Another Jonathan, yeah. little Daniel, three sisters named Megan, yeah. Megan, Catherine, Megan, Megan, one, Ashley, two, and three, Amanda, <laughs> two Sean's, yeah, two, four, I, me and my thirteen brothers and sisters. <laughs> um, yeah, my mom got my mom got married early and then divorced and then discommunicated from the church because she got divorced. Oh wow! When she she got married when she was in college right. and it didn't work out. And right. She was just honest with herself. Right, right, right. She was right, like, right. "This ain't gonna work." Right. And God, they like, they forgive but unless you get divorced, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. So she became a free agent, mm -hmm. which saved you from possible molestation. Yeah, because so because my dad line. was Episcopalian, so yeah. we would go to Episcopalian. I was Thank confirmed God. as Episcopalian, and this wiener wasn't got molested, sucked until I was would, seventeen. That would have thrown you off, I think. I would you had be, a lot happen to you, and you still, I'd be dead. You still did great. If I would have sucked a dick or had my dick sucked by an adult, yeah. there would be a needle in my arm, and I'd be under a bridge right yeah. now. 100%. Right. I'm on the line, baby. <laughs> that would have pushed it over. That would have just been the wind gust you didn't need. <laughs> that would have been the blow yeah. over the wrong line. The coup d'etat. Yeah. If I would have just gotten sucked off by a guy with hairy hands grabbing my thighs, <laughs> I'd just be fucking, I'd be nodding right now. <laughs> Dan, my mom would be sick of me. My mom would be like, "Where's Dan? I'll come and get him." Hey, mama. Hey, mama. Now, what's it like? Billions is a big hit, dude. Yeah, people love billions. Yeah, it's a but you know what I love about Dan? Dan is such a real guy with integrity, the kind of guy you want to be around. It's so funny when people re like I've heard people scream out at shows, oh, and you're just like, "Yeah, it's a character on a show." What's up? Like you get like upset. Oh, dude, I get mad. <laughs> yeah. I like, yeah, man. I know. I'm on that show. It's a character. Yeah, what? <laughs> well, I think what it is, is, and you understand this, when you spend your whole life trying to get over as a comedian, yeah. when something else hits. It's also an annoying thing that someone screams out like something. Like, yeah, you're like. What's up? I know you're excited and shit, but like. Also. I was I'm doing comedy. Can you at least at the end of the show say, I love you on billions? Maybe not in the middle of the show when I'm about to do. Maybe that's not the right fucking time to scream that out. The only time I got a guy kicked out for it. It was this drunk guy, and he just kept yelling Mafi, my character's name. Uh -huh. And I was like, all right, guy, whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. Shut the fuck. And finally, I was like, shut the fuck up. What? Yeah. Yeah. What do you want me to do? You want me to do some billions? Yeah. Here's my acting on billions. Yeah. <laughs> there, you happy? Yeah. And the guy was like, fuck you. And I was like, oh, fuck you. And I was like, mad. And then they kicked him out. And I was like, god damn it. And then I was like, I'm never going to let that get to me again. But I probably will. I'm a, I'm a fucking psycho. Somewhere in the world... There's a dude, there's a dude you could meet up with and you and him could have like a very Serrano de Bergiac yeah. type of business where of intimidation yeah. where he's like a big dude, but his voice is like, hey, how you doing? Hey, guys. And then you, Where's that money? you're behind the curtain. Going, hey, the, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, hey dude, motherfucker. Yeah. And then you, he just stands there in the shadow yeah. and like the combo of your voice and his fucking girth. You guys could shake down a lot of fucking drug dealers. I've realized that when I've had... You can't show up like that no. with that voice. No. And they're going like, he's tall, but he's... I can take him. They're like, oh my God, that's all soft and chewy in the middle. I'll walk through him. <laughs> there dude, is, you got a voice on you. There was, there's been times where I've called a restaurant, right? Like with a problem. I yeah. ordered food and there's like a problem. I call him like, hey, what's going on with this? Like this order's fucking terrible. <laughs> and it didn't come out right. And the guy's like, hey, hey, hey. Andre the Giant's on the phone. And I get, oh, I will, I order it. You do not bring it to me. Bring me the sandwich. I want the whole sandwich. I, I want my sun chips. I want the sun chips. I want the... Bring me my sun chips. <laughs> <laughs> and, then they, and then they show up and I'm like, hey. And they're just like, I've seen guys be like, this is that fucking guy. This is him. <laughs> Big headed loser. Oh, you you uh you waited for a while at that Mexican restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dos Caminos on yeah. 50th and 3rd. Yeah, I used to make a joke. I had a joke. Yo, y'all, you and Nate coming over yeah. and watching me take tables on the cafe yeah. is stuck in my brain. <laughs> it's stuck in my brain. Because you and Nate are just sitting outside like this. 
<laughs> and I'm like, well, uh, the coach you need to put Bill is uh, banana leaves with pork cooked in pork, pork leaves. And it comes with well, a nice Well, had it easy. He, he fucking, he was a waiter in Tennessee, and then he just lived off his wife until he got famous. But Yeah, well, Nate did a thing where he was like, I'm going to test the bounds of my relationship. <laughs> and he's like, it's happening, baby. But you know what? He's Shout like, you're going to pay for everything, and I'm going to come home with a drunk midget at four in the morning. Dude. Cool but, deal. But fuck <laughs> Being happy for Nate, I'm happy for Laura. Yeah, she's. And when I go to Tennessee, I'm. Yeah. I look to her and I'm like, "You did it. Yeah, yeah. You put up with yeah. Nate." And she's the one she that seems it. happy because Nate's running around going, "These goddamn liberals! Oh, he's, like, he's pulling yeah. out machine guns. I'll shoot yeah. anybody that comes on my property. <laughs> I play golf so I don't lose my mind." And meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, Laura's like, uh, "Siri, can yeah. you bring on relaxing music? <laughs> When's my nanny showing up?" Yeah, <laughs> dude, it's it's that's what's awesome. Yeah, it's like she, it paid off. It paid off. Paid off for her, yeah. If you're gonna stick by him, yeah. If you're gonna stand by your man, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna get. A, you might get a big house. Yes, yeah. She did it, and it paid off. But that's like uh, when you guys coming by to watch me wait tables was always the funniest because yeah. I was like, damn, you're about to watch me melt down because I snapped almost every table. Really? Yeah. You couldn't the, handle the the. You, I remember you had jokes about the the like the the financial guys. They're always yo, the worst, right? Which is crazy that I'm on billions. Yeah. Because those were the guys that. The guy I'm playing yeah. was the guy that I hated the most. Right. It's like, what's up, man? Can I get a Patron margarita? And you're like, yeah. Yeah. Hey, where's that Patron margarita at, boss? Hey, I said no salt. And you're like, you said no salt. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just fantasizing about fucking shoving his face in the guacamole. Dude, the worst feeling. Did you ever get called Garcon or something? they ever make jokes or Boy? Oh, snaps? But uh, uh, all the euros. Yeah. Because remember, market crashed in 08. Yeah. Our dollar went to shit. Right. So the Spaniards, the French, the fucking... Everyone from Swedes, yeah. Everyone came over and was staying at the Waldorf, and then they'd come over to Dos Caminos because they want, they want the bistec, yeah, a bistec, yeah. Right, we don't have bistec. We have a steak burrito, right. a bistec. <laughs> and like, I became xenophobic like a motherfucker. <laughs> but the saddest I ever was. It's closed down. R.I.P. Dos Third, dude. It's closed down. It's gone, dude. What? They still got Dos Caminos, but they don't have Third App. There, uh, that was the cafe, baby. Dos that's Table One Hundred One. Yeah, see that's where that Soho, old man right? is sitting. Oh no, that's yours. That was ours. Yeah. See where that old man? You guys were standing right outside that gate right yeah. there. That where that old man sitting is Table One Hundred One. Yeah. You know, it's on cafe. Then you got 120, 140. Yeah. Then it goes up from there. Yeah. I could work a whole shift right now if you needed me to. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that looks pretty full. It's probably a lunch rush. I was never there at dinner. But they, um, this, the, the only time I ever, oh, God damn, dude, you just gave me PTSD. <laughs> Seeing that picture, that's, that's Baja Bar. All right, Baja Bar. Yeah, that's fucking front bar, dude. So I would work cocktail section. Go back, not that, that's not us. Go back to that other picture. See down that hallway right there to the right? Yeah. Right there, that's the cocktail section. It's lower Cielo and upper Cielo. Where that staircase is, which I don't know why they have a great- You're describing it like a theater of war. You're yeah. like, that's, you see that? That's Hill right, 852 so in North Korea? Yeah. <laughs> right there, that's the Da Nang. Yeah. You, go to the, you go to the shores of that, a lot of blood. So under those stairs- Our platoon was right to the left right there. We were bunkered <laughs> now, down. I'm in with the 256. We get dropped in. <laughs> So I was uh, I was upstairs. We did like you do uh, Christmas parties. That was the only time I worked at night. Yeah. So I'd take sets off and I'd like to make like 300 bucks at night. And I was working Upper Cielo, which is that upstairs area. Yeah. It was hand passed desserts. Uh-huh. No one ate any. Yeah. And I hadn't ate. Uh-huh. So I, I hadn't eaten yet. So yeah. I like went downstairs and I was under those stairs and I was eating desserts. Uh-huh. And this lady's like, sir, where's the bathroom? And I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, dude, you had your apron on. I everything. would eat under those stairs when people wouldn't finish their. Oh meals. my god, like a pauper. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, Oliver dude. Twist. Yeah, dude. Please, so, sir, please. The, the only time I almost cried waiting tables was, uh, dude. I knew that guy. That's crazy. I knew who drew that chalk drawing. I knew that bar back. <laughs> I think it was actually my man. Shout out, Lois and all the bar backs. Um, I uh, I was auditioning for Montreal. Yeah, and it was 2010. Yeah, and. Uh, they called me. I remember that year. That was the year you, your career really started, like kicked in. That was the next Jesse, year. Jesse, you were there too. That was the yeah. next year. That yeah. was 2011. That was 2011. It was 2010. Right, right. I auditioned and I got a callback and I did the callback show at Broadway Comedy Club and I was like, I think I got it. Right. And then they called me and I was waiting tables there yeah. and I couldn't pick up. Yeah. So I went and I did a spot at Stand Up New York and my God, buddy, this is like a movie. My buddy like went, you didn't get the call, or I could just see you running, like you know, running to the call. I got it. Yeah, yeah. but I didn't. So right. I called back and I left a message. I go out drinking that night with my friend Zach, and we get blackout drunk at Stand Up New York. And a regular to, Tuesday for you back then. Uh, yeah, easy. Yeah, easy. 
It was a Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> and we went to the Dublin house on 79th. Got so blackout drunk that we bumped into Mark Cuban. It was uh-huh. a fucking weird night. Uh-huh. We were outside smoking, and, my, and I was like, eh, you know how you do that thing when someone looks like somebody? Yeah. I go, this is Mark Cuban-looking motherfucker. And he looked over, and I was like, you're Mark Cuban. <laughs> and he's like, I ain't. He's like, he tried saying he was his older brother, and we're like, why are you Mark Cuban? He's like, I am Mark Cuban. And he left, and we were like, ah! we're like, oh, my God. So the next day, I was brutally hungover. I work a lunch. One of the worst hangovers I've ever had, the only other... Terrible hangover, I remember. It's because uh, we were hanging out. Which one was that? It was when we saw Prince go into that jazz club. I remember we, that. And we yes. stayed and drink till fi- five in the morning. Yes. And uh, I was sweating I whiskey yeah. out the next Dude, morning. Dude, we just saw Prince. He just walked oh. in front of us on <laughs> West 3rd. Yeah. Got out of a well, limo. He walked, he walked in front and under us. Yeah. I mean, he's a tiny kid. Tiny, tiny guy. Yeah. He's in all white. Yes. Like an angel. Yeah, like and, you would picture. You wouldn't yeah. picture him in a pair of Levi's. No. Yeah, he, was, he didn't have some dockers he, on. Yeah. He walked in and he, had, he was in all white and he walked into that jazz club on west third mcdougal yeah. and we went to the bar because yeah. we were leaving and uh he never played remember i went outside to smoke a cigarette yeah. and asked the bouncer i was like is prince gonna play he's like yeah. nah he's just here to watch his drummer he already yeah. left yeah 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 and we went in and me you and zach were hammered yes and and so that was the worst hangover i had ever waiting tables mm-hmm. second was when i went out to stand up new york the next day i'm on a double and i'm like wait is this a continuation of of the yes. montreal story I'm hungover. I work lunch. In between lunch and dinner, I'm sleeping in one of the back booths. I have my fucking f- flip phone uh-huh. on my chest. Uh-huh. And it's like, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> and I, I pick it up, and it's Jeff Singer and Robbie Pra. Rest in peace to Jeff Singer. R.I.P. Yeah. Gone but not forgotten. The hat's still around. <laughs> yeah. uh, and they call me, and I'm like, dude, I, I was sitting at table 403. And I was like, I sat up and I was like, hey, guy, you know, you do like the I'm not sleeping voice. Yeah. Hey, guys, what's yeah. up? <laughs> and they're like, hey, we just wanted to call you and let you know you were one of the last two names we crossed off the list to not go to Montreal this year. And I was like, OK. <laughs> and they're like, but we're just really happy with the progress you're making. We like this joke. We like this joke. And I hang up and I was like, I have another year of waiting tables. Right, right. Another year, guaranteed. You almost went postal the next day. No, dude. When someone asked for guacamole, you, you just don't went, even understand. Bow, that was bow, right. Bow. I'm telling you, it was right before a dinner shift. This happens, so I start the dinner shift, and the first table I get are four finance bros, and they're talking. And I walk up to the table and I do the first approach, and I'm like, "Hey guys, how you guys doing tonight? Can I start you off with some guacamole?" And they don't look at me, yeah. and I go. Can I start you guys off with some guacamole? And they're like, dude, you such a slut. You fucked her. And they're like having this conversation. And I'm like, and I just felt my throat close. And I go, it's cool. I'm a human. And then one of them goes, oh, what's up, bro? Four Coronas. And then just back to the conversation. And I was like, I want to kill him. And I want to cry. And I just remember walking away being like, hey, can you? Can you take 363? I gotta go smoke a cigarette. And I just went outside and I was like, ah, it fucking yeah, yeah. sucked. Yeah. yeah. That was. You know what they did to me? I was with you. You remember that? So, same year. Because I remember your first audition. Jeff Singer walked up to you and was like, where where have you been? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got passed to the finals first. First. But then, but I, so I auditioned 2010 like you. I didn't yeah. get it. Okay. Um, but then, and that was that year. But I got the similar speech. I remember that because we were both hyped of yeah. like, what if we go together? Yeah. But then we went together in 2011. Yeah, 2011. So when they well, go- you got real new faces. Laker and I got what he called no faces. Yeah, but it ended up being, yours ended up being the better one because they, they created yours because it was unwrapped. Yes. So it's like nobody came to ours because we were already wrapped. Yeah. yeah. The only people that came to yours were who the people who were there's managers and agents right. yeah, got Yeah, we were just go. performing for our fucking agents and managers. Ours, and ours was like a fucking strip club filled with sailors. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> woo! Yeah. And you're like, like ours do- suck. Yeah, it was crazy. I got very lucky that year. It was the first year that they created that unrep show, which was a better show. And that's what New Faces used to be. Yeah. Like people would come and try to rep you. Yeah. But since we were all rep, they started that thing. So, but the way they told us, told me, I was with Jesse in our old office, our old studio. Um, I drive by that sometimes. Huh? In Gowanus? Yeah. You, you remember we shot the more recent video? Yeah, there? where yeah. I was the hipster photographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My body's as bad now as it was then. Yeah. And, I, and I knew I had to pull it together. <laughs> Yeah, you've had dad bods since you were 26. Dude, I've been bleeding yeah. in there. I, I had some. I had rough patches. I get yeah. real father of three, yeah. four, so. 
you yeah you have you have you don't have dad bod you have dan bod yeah, yeah. dude it's, i'm dan and i'm dan and out and then i gotta tighten it in it takes me years to tighten it back up too <laughs> so it was funny like i was always like a rebel in comedy and it, like so i never liked i was always like standoffish with the industry you know that type of oh stuff. my god drunk Giannis rants yeah, back I then we're fuck like them all they even, yeah. by the way that was like my cool comedy rant you're like that fucking fuck them all <laughs> so they call me right it was robbie and jeff and i was with jesse we were sitting at our desks and uh i put them on speaker and they're like hey we just want you to know um you know you didn't make it you know but we think you're funny and i put them on mute Remember? And I was standing just, I was like, fuck it. Fuck you. That's I was so going, funny. fuck you, you piece of shit. Fuck you with your dumb hat. <laughs> and then they go, we're just kidding. And I go, I was like, oh, thanks. But then when I hung up, I was like, why the fuck would you do that? What, what did that mean? Though? They did it for like three minutes. Like That they, was in 2011. That was 2011. So they did it. They did like three minutes thing about how I didn't get it, but how they, you know, if I keep working at it and stuff like that. That's so the I'm, exact speech I got in 2010. Yeah, I'm just fucking yelling at them on the phone. And then they go, we're just kidding. We love you. You're in. And then they were quiet. And I just had to pretend like I oh. thought it was funny. Ah, oh. ah, 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 That's like a girl being like, don't use a con. And yeah. then she's like, I have herpes. And you're like, what? And he's like, uh. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm still soft. Yeah. Now. And so then I hung up and I still sounds like, fuck those guys. Yeah. They, but, yeah. when they told me I was going to Montreal, they did a similar thing and they were like, you didn't get new faces. And I was like, outside smoking on Third Avenue. I was like, at those Caminos. And I was like, oh, all right, man. And they go, but we still want you to come to Montreal. <laughs> we're doing this brand new thing called Unwrapped. And I was like, Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want a new face. Yeah, but, you, you know, it ended up... And then that, me, you... Who was but you, you did that show. That show ended up being great. You were the standout on that, and that that was like the beginning of But I wasn't of even career. the beginning of... I mean, dude, you, you know who was on that show, who's like one of the most famous people out there right now? Who was on there? Little Rel. Oh, oh, that's right. That's when I met Little Rel. That's is when right. we did Unwrapped together. He was, he was, he's yeah. always made me laugh. Yeah, yeah he's a it's, funny It's dude. been fucking awesome watching yeah. him become lo- a legit superstar. Yeah, yeah, he is. You're like, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unwrapped. It yeah, was, that's right. He was. I remember we went to breakfast with him. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Little Rel rules. Yeah, mine was stacked too. Oh my God, you had Gerard Carmichael. Allie. You. Allie. Um, um, wait, Johnny Pepperton. Johnny Pepperton was on it. Um, Mike Racine. Ron Funches. Ron Funches. Mike Racine. Uh, I think Dan oh. St. Germain. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Um, I don't remember. Oh, uh, our buddy from Minnesota, Cy Amuse. I always fuck up his last name, Cy. You know Cy. He was the Viking brothers. They were like the hot guys that were longboarding. Was he everywhere. Mine? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Montreal 2011. Yeah. That was unrepped, dog. Yeah, look, look at up, that. Look up Jim the, Twos was Look up on New Faces 2011. I can't remember everything. Yeah, look up New Faces. You guys had a fucking class. Yeah, me and Jesse went up Full there. Full there. We went is. up there in 08 with Nate. Uh, we were just wearing ditch hats, and Nate goes, what What do y'all, did y'all win the hats festival? Y'all on so the hat funny. show? <laughs> 2011. There, yeah, that article. Click on the comics comic, because he gives the full list. Yeah. Dude, it's like, a lot of, uh, da, 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 there it is. Oh, that's the characters. Siam Muse, Kevin Barnett. Kevin Gerard Barnett. Gerard Carmichael. Yeah. Oh, dude. Remember when we hung out in Rebecca's... Nick Turner. San G- Nick Sim- Turner. Sim- 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 Streeter Seidel. Beth Stelling. That's yeah. when I met Beth Stelling. Dan St. Germain Sim- was there. Oh, Cy? Cy was Cy. on there. Nick Turner. Allie, Allie Wong. Allie Wong was on there, yeah. God damn. Remember when she used to murder at Bar 4? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I called her. I was like, she's going to be a big star. Because she just had a lot of charisma from like a small package. Yeah, but she murdered in murdered. that room. She would murder there. Remember when Che murdered in that room? Murdered. And then then you- I went up after and ate it. Now you put up Jesse May. I probably did. Yeah, yeah. you did. And she goes, don't but, you love when your boyfriend books the show and puts you up after one of the best yeah. sets? It's like, there you go. Yeah, dude. I want, I want to give you a good spot. Yeah, dude. <laughs> right after the right after the guy does real yeah. well. Ride that way. Yeah, you used to murder on that show too. Bar 4 was That fun. was a fun show. You'd either dude. murder or eat shit. Yeah, it was just one of those shows you just wait around until I finished to get up. Like God nobody damn. knew. I always said, I remember Mike y- Racine first time he got up there, he was just pissed. And I was like, hey buddy, that's just the way this show works. If your beer was in your arm like this, yeah. remember that Jesse? <laughs> if Giannis was holding his beer, totally free hand. <laughs> just had his beer in his arm and his fucking bird wing. You were in for a wait. It was in for I would a go long smoke, day. I would smoke a cigarette with Dan Goodman outside. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, let's go outside. Giannis is fucking, he's not bringing me up for Dude, a while. Dude, I would go on these long fucking rants. You would murder. Yeah. You would have, sh- your ghost bit, 
started as a rant. It did, yeah. Because you were like, started, yeah. well, who was the lady that would come and sit for every show? Gail. Gail. We did a Gail. Ooh. We did a Gail Palooza. Gail Palooza. She, I remember. I was on comics. it. Yeah, she picked the comic. Gail. I, you ever talked to her? No, I haven't seen her in. Uh, I hope she's okay. Yeah, we did Gail Palooza. We did the Laker Awards. Laker Awards was the greatest night of New York comedy ever. It was. If you so got to be a part rock, of it, dude, if yeah. you got to watch Joe List bomb announcing he had herpes. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was watching that and watching Nate get dropped or Nate dropped Joe I think when they were dancing yeah yeah God. Oh, everyone was hammered after at some point uh, Nate got on someone he got on someone's shoulders that was Joe List fell. Joe List and they I was fell. outside yeah. smoking and I just watched yeah. him fall <laughs> dude um, Chris Laker used to drink what were those shots it was uh, vodka and orange soda yeah and, so we called it a Laker at yeah. the Laker and you guys would hand out they were Lakers. like a dollar dude yeah, I got we were like we're gonna do dollar Lakers Joe List and I. Pre partied. Yeah. We fucking. That was you, we, both of your drinking days. Yeah. Like full alcoholics. Yeah. <laughs> we, pro, we, we fucking pre gamed at Gilby's in Astoria mm-hmm. and then took road sodas. We had tall boys <laughs> for the 95 minute ride mm-hmm. down to bar four. And then you had a red carpet and Joe had a mustache. Yeah. And we both decided to wear jeans with dress shirts and tuck them in with yeah. ties. I got pictures of you guys. And yeah. we got fucking blackout. Everyone got. I mean, I was so fucking hammered. And it was it was so funny. Me and Nate introduced everyone, and uh, no, me and Nate introduced Laker yeah. every time for every him day. to introduce yes. what it was. And me and Henry Zabrowski won most likely to die. Most likely to die. Yeah, that's that's how bad my <laughs> drinking was. You're, you're and drinking. so was Henry's. Henry, yeah. Henry, who by the way might be the most successful person we know. Yes, he's very successful. I love last podcast on the they're lock. massive and they're they're massive. great. But yeah. it's like man, me Henry Zabrowski is one of the funniest dudes of all time. Of all time. Yeah, but at that time he was fat. So that's I Murder think Fist get... was the most punk ditch films and Murder Fist were the two most punk rock things in comedy. Right yeah, now. Murder Fist was great. I remember one jo- lo- like one inside joke I told on a show with Murder Fist, I, and they were cracking up. I was like, "Yeah, you guys." I was like, "You know, this business ruins everything." I'm like, "You guys are going to be a band till one of one of the fat guys gets a commercial." <laughs> Yeah, you were waiting on Ed or Henry to break. <laughs> yeah, what do you guys get to commercial? It's over. Dude, yeah, that, uh, break, yeah. that was such a fun time. And I always oh, look dude. back to that and I'm like, man, that's the like, funnest. The funnest time. When you looked at, when, it, when you get like, obviously I'm like half joking about cool comedy when I watch it, but I'm like, to me, that was the best part of comedy. So when I see people come in and just take money from it yeah. without living it, I know it was saying. like, that was the most fun. The most fun I think I'll ever have. And this is the come up. Was the those up. shows because like those great ideas come from poverty? They come from just a pure place where you like. You guys had a hey, podcast that we imagine podcast. how big it would have been. Oh, uh, it would have been huge! But I remember when we had the idea. It was just the purest. It was that time where you go, "Let's just do it," because yeah. nobody had anything. You know, uh, nobody you, was nobody was ashamed of what they were gonna. Like, we could play be. basketball on Wednesday during the day, and then on Friday you could be like, "I don't know, what do you want to do? You want to?" Giannis is filming a sketch; he needs people, and yeah. you're like. Oh, I'd love you. You'd be like, felt honored. Yes. If you're like, hey, like, Giannis wants you to be in your sketch. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Murder Fist had me in a sketch. I was like, I would, I would love to. Yeah, yeah. It and it's just, like, it's, it's awesome being on Billions. Yeah. It's fun. It's cool. But it's like, man, doing Mauricio shit or yeah. like filming any of that stuff. That was going fun, to dude. fucking Gowanus. Yeah. Even the horrible gigs. I think back, like traveling for a hundred bucks. Dude, I remember the fun making. We would you, have. I remember making. Giannis doesn't smoke weed, and I smoke a lot of weed. And we did a Soul Joel gig. But I smoked a little bit. And you smoked and we were hot. listening yeah. to Backspin. Yeah. And you were with that, we were with that Scandinavian comic who was awesome. Yeah, what was his name? I don't know. Giannis was always friends with your, like, weird I was like an comedians. American boy band. Like, yeah. I was nobody here. And then I just went to Scandinavia and did shows. And, like, they would all be sold out. Because it's an American guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was the American guy. Dude, but you, and then you'd bring them over here. And yeah, they'd, like, they'd bring is... me up. This is the best, co- one of the best comics in America. And I'd, like, I'd yeah. walk up there. Like, and I'd go back to bar four for four people. Yeah. <laughs> For fucking Frankie running it. Yeah. How's Frankie doing? He's good, man. He still has my old dog, uh, Gilda. Yeah, he's oh. good. Yeah, once in a while I check in with Frankie. He's doing good. Yeah. Tell him I said hi next He's time in a CrossFit. I mean, he's oh, big oh, Frankie's CrossFit. Jack now? Yeah, he's in Jack now. Yeah, he's Frankie in CrossFit. Frankie fucking ruled. Yeah, yeah. Frankie was like, like getting, nothing made me feel more like a comedian than becoming friends with Nate and you and like getting into that because it felt like we weren't the cool kids. Right. Like, dude, I remember when you had Bar 4 and Hannibal decided to start his show. Yeah. And Hannibal's show was like sold out, like overflowing. And then Giannis would just go up with his beer <laughs> and his thing and he'd be like, Are there people hey, here now? Ali Wong would be going to do Hannibal's show. Yeah. He'd go, hey, tell Hannibal to send the overflow yeah. over here. 
He'd just be mad and we'd be drinking. He'd be like, hey, tell Hannibal to send whatever fucking extra ones he's got. Tell him we got fucking room. <laughs> I'll tell you what. There should, Frank Gallo Frank should rules. do a comedy special for comedians. Yes. Because that's the only thing that I think could truly make comedians laugh. Yeah. We're so jaded and like you watch comedy, you can't really enjoy it because you're always thinking, oh, that's a great bit. Yeah. But Frank Gallo was so bad at comedy that it was funny. He would go up with these laminates. You remember the laminates? <sighs> yes. And he'd do like the, the cock burglar, yeah. the cock alarm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'd do these things. I remember I was always watching Frank. And he did pussy lips when he did the act out. <laughs> And he'd fly away with the pussy lips, and you'd see comics in the back of the room. The whole audience would just be staring, going, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. They'd be horrified, and then comics in the back would just be dying laughing. I would either have my beer near the foosball table, or I'd be over at the bar ordering, <laughs> just watching Frankie like this. All right, <laughs> dude. It was he had this laminates. He, he had these cartoons that he had laminated, and he'd be he'd go through them. He'd be like, "What happened? If somebody breaks in, your alarm may not work." But you know what definitely will work? A cock alarm! And you're like, what? Yeah, dude. <laughs> and it was just a fucking cock coming out of a clock. But and then you see it going into the burglar's mouth. Like, oh! Yeah. <laughs> dude, it was, you, it was like this fun, like, um, Harris Stanton said that to me one time at Stand Up New York. He was like, Dave Chappelle told him years ago, he's like, if you don't enjoy coming up, you're not going to enjoy when you get there. And then you look back and you're like, I understand that completely yeah. now. Because it was like, you just watch people try shit. Those bucket mics at the Village Lantern where you're like, what is that? But then occasionally you would see a fucking Nate Bargetsy or somebody where you're like, holy shit, that dude's funny. Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah. It's like uh, you, you're seeing people come up, you're experiencing coming up. The, the stories are just the funnest. The experiences are the funnest. I have so many fucking, like me and Nate on the road. I remember one time... We got so drunk. We, we did a show in Vermont or something. It was snowing. I mean, like... Brattleboro. Feet, I think it might have been Brattleboro. It was snowing. We were hanging out with these chicks afterwards. And I was so drunk. This is one of Nate's favorite. I was so drunk. The car pulled over to get some food. And yeah. I was like passed out in the, in the back. And then I just woke up and thought... I didn't know where we were. I thought we were home. I didn't know where home was. So I just got out of the car and started walking. <laughs> into the snow and he was just dying yeah. laughing i mean do we have there's so many funny fucking stories yeah it's crazy now that like another Nate time he sells just, out the wind now he sells, he's like a big comic yeah but we used to go do like dining halls in connecticut for oh, like dude. 200 bucks yeah i mean i remember you driving me back and me drinking vitamin water with rum in it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and just being like Dirt bags. Just being like, Giannis, do you guys remember when you drove me back from Montreal and I was so hungover? That, and I remember Giannis, I swear to God, I, I remember this clear as day. I, I, was, I was so hungover, I was sleeping in the back and Giannis is looking in the rearview mirror at me, hungover. I remember and this, And he goes, yeah. all you gotta do is quit drinking. He goes, he goes Danny Soder, only problem. Yeah. All you gotta do is quit yeah. drinking. And I remember being in the back and like, shut the fuck up, Giannis. Pull over, I want to smoke a cigarette. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was, I'm glad, I'm really, like, happy for you that you quit that. That would have been a, yeah, but that was, because I've been an alternate universe where you just, I like. I mean, I got, it got yeah, real bad, and, yeah. like, because you, you know, gave me Alan's phone number, and I started going to therapy and realized that I was an alcoholic, and that it was a lot of my fault, Yeah, you know, and then yeah. you're like, oh, shit, all right, yeah. you get accountability, and yeah. start looking at, like, you know. It just doesn't lead anywhere good as you get older, you're like. No. You can't keep going into your 30s, 40s, uh, 50s. Not, the amount I miss it is so little. Yeah. To, you know, I think I'll hit nine years next March. Congrats, man. Yeah. That's so it's a like, long time. Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah it starts and like... Dude, like your career and you can... Oh, it's You good. can almost you can see it. You, you can, can see almost, it. You can almost see it. You can like see it. you quit drinking. I got like, good shit. Phew! When I was drinking, I got Conan. I got a Comedy Central half hour. But then like I took the alcohol out and first you start doing stand up. Yeah. Without drinking, and you're like r raw. Yeah. Your nerves are like shit. You can right. hear everything, right. and then you're like, "Oh, I sucked." Yeah, I was. But then sometimes you see bits, and you're like, "That was a good bit." That was a think good of that bit. when Maybe I was drunk. Maybe you should drink again. <laughs> <laughs> I've had you go both ways. Where I'm like, dude, in between, Michelle Wolf had one of my favorite jokes. In between taping my HBO special at, at uh, the Bowery Ballroom, I didn't like the first show. And I, it was like just me, Michelle, and like one other person in the dressing room. And I'm like mad. I'm like, fuck, that first show fucking sucked. It was my fault. I wasn't good. I just need to relax or whatever. 
And Wolf is just there on her phone, and she goes, I know, you should start drinking again. <laughs> like that. And it made me laugh, where I was like, fuck you, because I know that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, should I have a couple of fucking beers right there? Get fucking loose? Should we fucking let the, let the tiger out of the Dude, cage? The, I mean, the drinking is bad, but it's a, it, it, a lot of fun stories. God damn, I had some fun stories. Dude, I remember another one. Me and Nate did a college together in Springfield, and we went to the bar. And uh, he put his uh, he put his card down yeah. for us uh, like to do a tab, and I was like, I'll pay you back half later, or whatever. And uh, we got so hammered, and all the students were there too. And uh, some guy said something. This is funny, Nate story. Some guy said something. We were with like one guy who was gay, yeah. And then, like a lot of these guys at the bar like started making fun of him because he was gay. And Nate just wanted to fight him. Yeah. So Nate, the one of the funniest lines is Nate goes, Yo, "Why are you making?" F-? I was like, "Nate, dude, we're gonna get fucked up." Yeah, there's, there's like more than enough. Up. Yeah. But he goes, he goes up to me, he goes. He goes, because Nate always defends the underdog. Always. You know, always. So he goes there, he goes, you're making fun of that dude. Like, and, they, and one guy, uh, what, what's, your, what's your fucking problem? And he's trying to start the fight, and the guy goes, uh, he's a, he's a, anyway, he, say, he called him a slur, and Nate goes, and the funniest thing that he goes, Nate goes drunk, he goes, he goes and you could hear Nate saying, he goes, yeah, that's, he, that's his deal, but what's your deal, though? <laughs> That's his deal. Yeah, whatever, man. That's yeah. what he's got going on. Yeah, that's his deal. Why don't you learn a but, little bit better? But what's your deal? Yeah. Anyway, we argued a little bit. <laughs> it didn't end up happening. This is the best part of the story. Then he goes to pay his tap. He goes to pay his tap. The whole bar had been using his tab. His tab was $800. <laughs> this was back when we were all broke. And he just pays it, and we laughed, and it was like there was nothing you could do. Oh. Like, those kids had heard at some point that he put down a tab, and the, as college kids, they just fucking kept going, put it on his tab. That's brilliant. I, I did that in Arizona, but $800 is hilarious. <laughs> For a broke Nate to get an $800 yeah, tab, yeah. I mean. I mean I hey, think was he doing like, a lot of this? It's bananas. Yeah, I think I, it's bananas. He's like, I, that's his deal, but what's your deal? I mean, about? I don't even, I get it. <laughs> I get it. We like that was like a, I gave him half, I think, and we just like that. We just chalked up our pay. We're like we just we paid for fucking Springfield University or whatever so to just drink on funny. that. Funny, so I like almost beat a comedian up, but instead I got drunk on him. <laughs> I got drunk on him. Fuck, dude. Yeah, I mean there was so many good stories coming God, up. Damn. It was the time, and it's just it, it's you, you feel nostalgic when you think about it. All yeah, but times. then that's also like you also realize kind of how lucky we are now to still be doing it and still have the opportunity to do it, and it's like. You know, they always threaten canceling, but canceling isn't really canceled. You're more like you lose the fun shit for a while. Right. You got to go back down. You go back. It's like, you know, go back five steps. Yeah. You get sent down. You get sent down. You get sent down. Like Louie's back. Yeah. 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 Even though he'll never be that again. Right. But it's like. He the, still sells out. It's like still, a knee injury. Yeah. You're like, ooh, you're MVP. Yeah. You might have to go back just to being an all-star. Yeah. You, you become Antonio McDice. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Derrick Rose. Yeah. McDice, dude, two knees. Yeah. He was on the Nuggets twice. Uh, dude, I love I Antonio know, McDice. That dude was fucking. When him and Amari. I don't think I saw two more power. Sean Kemp, maybe. Sean Kemp, Amari Stoudemire. Amari Stoudemire, Antonio McDice. More like thunderous, yeah. powerful, athletic yeah. force that God. just like, wha-bang. Like, loved McDice. Yeah. Dude, McDice Big was... Big 2-4, dude. Yeah, and then he... I loved him on the Nuggets. Blew out those knees, and then he just had that, like, 12-footer, yeah. and then when he would dunk, it would, like... It, would, yeah. it looked like, like a Steph Curry <sighs> dunk. Yeah. It'd be like when old men get up, yeah. like... Fuck. <laughs> so, this was fun, Dan. Dude, I love you. You yeah. know what's crazy is I looked at the time, and yeah. it shook me. Because I was like, it? it's four. Oh! Yeah, that's why I was like... You're late! <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm fine, yeah. whatever, you know. yeah. I'll just we just, had a good time though. Yeah, dude. Always fun. Um, Dan Soder, The Bonfire, you got to check out with Dan Soder and Jay Okerson. Yeah, listen to The Bonfire. It's a podcast. Um, go stream my HBO special. It's the one that I'm proud of. So please go watch that. And uh, I love you, dude. I you, love you literally, dude. man, have been like a guy that I've always, immediately when I walked in and I see Jesse and you, it's just, it's just a comfort level. The band is like, back. But it's like, um, you've always been good to the, to the people that deserve you to be good to, and it always shows. Thank you know, you, like yeah. who you're friends with. It's yeah. like people come back to you for a reason. It's because you're always you've always been uh, like a straight shooting awesome guy. Thank you, dude. Yeah. You too. I love you. Yeah, I love you, buddy. And it's yeah. it like yeah, I'll do this anytime you want. Thanks, bro. Come out here and sweat and fucking. Yeah, you wherever can't see we it. are, Brooklyn. It's like we're doing this show in Africa right My now. My God, dude! I feel like I'm <laughs> I feel like I'm on sixty minutes interviewing a dictator in Central America. <laughs> I'm like, but you were, you agreed to let the hostages go. And then they're going to hang up and like, we got to get you out of here. We got to get you out of here now. There is a helicopter outside. 
Jay's going to show up. I'm like, hey, it was good. It was worth it. It was worth the trip out there. <laughs> Take care, everybody. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> and of course, we want to give a shout out to our super fan, small business shout outs. Long Days loves to support the small businesses and you should too. Okay, first stop. You got to give it to Mike Milanoff, the crazy Bulgarian cat strangler. You got to go to his Instagram page, Fix Nation, T-H-I-X Nation. Follow him. Throw your comments on there. He's the king. He's the big glue gunner. There's only one. He donates the most. Mike, we love you, brother. Keep doing up whatever criminal enterprise you're doing that allows you to afford this podcast. We love you. You look like a wild kid. Then, of course, we got Eastside Cheesecake, the best fucking cheesecakes around. Go to eastsidecheesecakes.com. Follow him on the gram, Eastside Cheesecake, for your cheesecake porn. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, go get yourself some cheesecake from Julie and Gregory. Gregory. Julie and Gregory. Yanni Bidens. Then, of course, we got Joseph uh, DeMonte up there, Blue Agave, on 3rd Avenue in Bay Ridge. We're taking Drew there for his birthday party. We went already for his graduation party. All the parties happen at Blue Agave. All one word on the gram, Blue uh, Agave, Bay Ridge. Follow them and go eat in Bay Ridge. Um, We're also brought to you by uh, ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. Jared, my boy Jared, the screwed-in Jewish kid. Oh, go get your nationwide free quote right now. Uh, ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. If you're moving your car, they will move it to anywhere in the country. ExclusiveAutoShipping.com will move your wheels and they'll give you a free quote. Okay. Uh, then we're also brought to you by the fucking goat, Rob's Mental Playground. Rob's Mental Playground, who did this hyena right here. Go commission a wild piece of art from uh, from Rob. Keep him in business. Keep those. Keep that mustache uh, ro- rolled up like that. So go to Rob's Mental Playground on the Instagram. Rob's Mental Playground on YouTube. Rob's Mental Playground dot com and buy a print T shirt. The kid's an artist essentially, and he's the wildest fan we got. He is a wild hyena. It is what it is. We're brought to you. Also, guys, uh, my boy Reese over here, very cool, very cool. Tech Vera, they provide uh, they provide um, IT services for mid-sized businesses and small businesses located right there in Denton, Texas, but it's worldwide, obviously, because it's the intranet. So small businesses turn to them. Instead of hiring IT staff, they hire Tech Vera to do all their IT stuff forum so it is great uh don't let a nation state hack your network encrypt your data demand a ransom call tech vera and they will hide what you were jerking off to techvera.com follow them on facebook tech vera it uh linkedin tech vera uh go if you're a small business and you need it hire them boom it makes it very easy right there you don't gotta hire individual tech people you hire tech vera they do everything for you tech vera we love you and we got a new guy who hasn't gotten his copy yet so he will get his read next time chris minetti chris minetti he's got some sort of uh thing in philly right so he's gonna be drinking water so we'll hear from him and uh Guys, I think there's three more slots right now. We bumped it up to 10, and that is it. So go if you have a small business. Go there right now. Get your shot out, and that's it. We're closing it at 10. That is all. Huh? The Hawaiian kid, Mata. He's got Pata or Mata. This is a kid for the free. For the free is all things Hawaiian, uh, Hawaiian music, dude. For the free, right? Is that what it is? Where's his fucking read again? For the free dot US. For the free US. The Jay Dizzle behind the camera remembers it. For the free dot US. Go there to find out about all the local bands in Hawaii. Uh, listen to them. Follow them. All the music events happen in Hawaii. For the free dot US is a great website to go to find all these new acts. This kid's goal is to keep keep music Hawaiian. He wants rock, rock and roll bands to stay in Hawaii. So go check out. Dude, go discover all these new bands in Hawaii. Support them. 
All right, go go peruse for the free.us. And if you're vacationing in Hawaii, hook up with some of these bands and go see their shows. All right, call, call, call them up. Say, yo, dude, what's up? What's what's the cooking spots? Who are the artists I should know about? If you're a music fan, you cannot, and you listen to this podcast, you have to go to ForTheFree.us and find out what's, who's, d- 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 uh, Disco Mars is from there, right? Bruno Mars is from fucking Hawaii. So is Dog the Bounty Hunter. So if you're into guys who got mullets and occasionally might say the N-word on camera, or if they dance real good, those are the only Hawaiian people I know. And I mean, if you didn't think a guy like Dog the Bounty Hunter was going to slip an N-word in somewhere, I mean, I mean, that's a kid who looks like he says it before breakfast. Guys, patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. I want to welcome our newest long haulers to the gang, Daniel Chernobelsky, real Polak. <laughs> you know when you got to slow down the last name it's, to, to sound it out? Uh, Julian, local three, steel pipe in my ass. Julian, local three steel pipe in my ass. Welcome. Joshua P. Marcus Walter, Jonathan Franco, Sergeant McBalls, <laughs> Chad Brophy, uh, Mike Villa, Chase May, SK, Kyle in Earl, Kyle in Earl, Justin Dean, Festy Cree, Jonathan Cordero, Deep State Fun Times, <laughs> Uncle Terry. The real Pum Pum Banzaji. And his picture is Aziz Ansari. So it's the real Pum Bazanji. The real Pum Zanjambi. <laughs> Pum Bazanji. The real Pum Bazanji. So kids make it a joke. Andrew Buckley, Ryan, Daniel Stevenson, Sandra, welcome. Michael Hamlet Jr. Guy threw Jr. You didn't need to put the Jr. in there. You're a wasp. John, uh, Jason, welcome. Maria129. Chris Minetti, who's our new uh, small business. Shout out. Welcome. We'll get your read next time. And Father Bill spackled my poop shoot with his glue gun. Welcome. And that is it, guys. We'll see you next time. Join patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Join up. Go to iTunes. Write a funny review right now. Five stars and write a review on iTunes. Tell your friends. Peace. It's been a long